three important Sheffield Steelers figures for you. 615, 682, and 889 and county. Those are the figures of the games played by our three guests on this edition of uh, the Steelers history. It's going to be called the core and it could be a long one. These three guys changed the DNA of the Sheffield Steelers before they arrived in 2005. With all due respect, the Sheffield Steelers hadn't got the greatest contingent of British players to challenge for championships. Paul Sample, Warren Tate, Butterworth, Ferran, Duncan and Lawrence weren't exactly of the quality required to challenge for the top honours. But in 2005-06, that all changed. And the first couple of these trio uh, joined the club. These three have all held the record as well for the most appearances for our club. Firstly, Mark Thomas. Secondly, Jason Hewitt. And of course, now... <laughs> Jonathan Phillips. Not even God's dog is going to be able to play as many games for the Steelers as Jonna. And we're delighted that the three of them join us. <clears throat> and boys, what I wanted to talk about tonight was the core, because it's something that's talked about so much when teams change all of their players and clubs then refer to a core of players. And and you three were with the DNA of the Steelers for so long and have left us, and of course with Jonna still leaving us, with with something that we'll hopefully get out of you tonight, what you you injected into the club that wasn't there beforehand. So we're going to run through all your seasons, and I'm sure a few stories, but hopefully you can tell us as well what it meant for you to be a Sheffield Steeler and, and how you got that through to the other players as well. So firstly, thanks for joining us. And um, secondly... Mark, we'll start with you. You were the you were the first one to join, weren't you? You were a couple of weeks um, ahead ahead of Jason, and through turmoil, I guess, in London, you arrived in Sheffield. Um, just talk us through how that all came about. Um, obviously, there was you know, it didn't go so well or end so well in London, and uh, you know we had a we were told it wasn't it wasn't continuing, so we were sort of struggling for jobs. Um, I went home, uh, spent. I think it was a couple of weeks at home. I'd been ill all week. And um, <clears throat> I think Sheffield had played Nottingham that, on a Friday, maybe. Um, and they, they got beat quite heavily. But by that point, Maxi had been appointed as coach. Um, and he phoned me up on the Saturday morning and he said, uh, get your gear ready, you're playing tonight. Um, so I pretty much packed my gear up after doing nothing for two weeks and, uh, and headed down to Sheffield. And I think the first game was against Belfast. The likes of Theo Fleury were playing and... You know, they had a pretty good team that year, to be fair, um, and just didn't tried not to look back. I remember speaking to Samps and uh, and and Warren Tate uh, so on the drive over because I'd met them before and, and knew of them, and yeah, and uh, you know, just sort of tried to take it as an opportunity and uh, and, and do my best for for the club, really. When I was doing a little bit of research for this, Jason, I I thought, why why did he play nine fewer games than than Mark in that first season? And of course, I then quickly realised you had the spell in Basingstoke. You went from London to Basingstoke and then to Sheffield. Just just quickly talk us through that. Yeah, to be fair, I think he was looking to meet me after that spell in Basingstoke. I was going to call it a day and everything. Um, but no, yeah, I went there. I think I was sat in London for about a week and. Um, <clears throat> Bernie called in, in Basingstoke and Maxi wasn't quite ready to bring me. So um, I thought I was better going there than, than doing nothing. And I think we played uh, Sheffield a couple of times in that spell because I remember sucker punching Tomo in a game. <laughs> so it was worth <laughs> yeah, going. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that was like a highlight of, of Basingstoke for three weeks. Um, and then, yeah, so I ended up in Sheffield and, and obviously living with Tomo and um, yeah, it's where it all began. It, and to say it was a mess before we got there, it was it was kind of still a mess when we got there, and um, it was quite an interesting first year. To be fair, first half a year, so I should say. We'll talk through that in a second, Johnny. You were still in Cardiff at that point, but did you know these two retrobates <laughs> at that point? No, I didn't. I think um, Tom might have. Had you been away with the national team at that point? Just, just and, the once. Yeah, that was the first year. And then Huey was, I think, the year after or something like that. And it, we had that um, that training camp up in Sheffield, didn't we, for GB? Yeah. And uh, so I think that was like the first like kind of proper meeting. Um, we ended up going out and having, having a few beers, and um, 
but we all seem to, I mean, everyone just seems to get on. It's everyone is, is we're all cut from the same kind of mold. So as soon as you kind of meet it, you know, everyone's kind of, um, you know, morals are the same and work ethics. And it, it, it just seemed to be something that clicked meeting these two little beds. <laughs> <laughs> these two little beds, though, joined a very um, split Sheffield Steelers camp. We'd gone through Paul Heavey as a coach. Denny said uh, Maxwell had come in. And if I remember right, uh, Mark, Jason, Maxi had said a few weeks before he'd been very... Uh, discourteous, if you like, to the likes of Kent Simpson, Mark Duty, and Mike Perrine, uh, Dan Seaman and those guys. And there was certainly, um, I don't think Dennis was welcomed with open arms, especially when he then had to fire Dan Seaman to to bring himself and Jason Robinson in. So did you feel it was a, a bit of a them and us and a frosty room that you first walked into? Mark? Uh, for starters, yeah, I think it was definitely, there was definitely a split room. Um, you know, I remember you know, obviously with knowing Maxi and, and Robbie, and then also being brought in by those guys. It was kind of a, a London contingency, if you like. And I obviously knew a few of the British players. Um, but I remember one of the one of the first weeks. It might have been the game you was talking about. I ended up getting into a little scrap with uh, Brad Crookshank, getting beat up. But hey ho, that was like most of the times. Um, and then the following practice, Maxi pulled us all around the board. Bearing in mind he wasn't very liked. And I was the new guy. And he basically just said, he called him out even more and, and sort of said, you guys should take a leaf out of his book and, and start fighting for the jersey. And, you know, I was trying to make, not make a name for myself, but try and find my place in the team and show that I was willing to stick up for my teammates and, and help, you know, for the cause and, and try and get us to where we, where the where the, chefs, where the Steelers wanted to be, really. Yeah. Was that the same for you, Jason? When you came in, did you find it a little frosty at first? Yeah, it was weird. It was... <clears throat> And obviously, Maxi wasn't one to to sort of mix his words. So, you know, he could he could be in a room with his best friend and and find a way to piss him off. So, um, it, it it was it was strange. And I mean, I came in and at one point I was on the the five on three power play just because I was kind of Maxi's boy. And and as we know, I mean, these days that's my role. But um, <laughs> back then, I, I should have never been in that situation. Um, that's what happens. Well, I, scored, I scored three in one practice, so I, I made it count. Um, <laughs> but no, it was just weird, and and they weren't they weren't necessarily bad guys on the team. I just think the situation was just awful. Like they they were going, there was like a revolving door on coaches, and then we came in and Maxi brought us in, and then Maxi ended up getting said something, and we were driving to the game with Maxi, and security won't let him in at the door. Um, so yeah. then we go into that game, we had no coach, he's, he's gone home. And then I think was when Wisp come in maybe a week later. So yeah. in the in the space of sort of three weeks, the Steelers had three coaches. Um, so it was, it was one definitely guy, a weird time. Yeah, the one guy who came out of it really well, I thought, was, was Jason Robinson, wasn't it? Because he was Maxie's mate. And then all of a sudden Maxie goes out and he's left in the room almost on his own. And he was credit to him because he ended up winning players player of the year they actually from absolutely detesting him to winning players player of the year he was a he was a special character in many ways wasn't he he was a great bloke he only got two votes though me and Huey he was always yeah he was always gonna get my vote because he battered John of the year before <laughs> Because you're not sucking me, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, there's a good story, actually, about, about Jonna. When uh, it was one of the last games in, in Cardiff when we were playing in London and uh, we, we ended up getting in a huge brawl. Uh, and Cornish ended up beating up the goalie, I think Cugnut, maybe. There was a load of other yeah. fights going on. And uh, anyway, we all got kicked out of the game. Anyway, turn up to practice. I'm like, where's my stick? Like, no, my stick was nowhere to be seen. It was like a new one-piece ccm vector i think it was anyway oh no, no roll on like six months and i go away to gb for the first time and i, I go in the I'll literally get into the change room and john is like, at me. like what, 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 what are you laughing at and he's like oh he goes start taping this stick up and he's like tomo you recognize this and i was like are you kidding <laughs> Him, he jumped off. The, he wasn't on. He wasn't involved in any of the fighting. He was just on the bench. He jumped no, off the bench. I was. That's, pulled, that's pulled when on. I got beat up. 
That's oh, by Robbie. Up by by Robbie, because I suckered yeah. Huey, and then Robbie jumped me, <laughs> beat me up, and then on the way off, I grabbed your stick. <laughs> Actually, no, because no. like... you started fighting Hilly, didn't you, afterwards? So yeah. me and me yeah, and Woz yeah. got kicked off, and then we heard it all kick off again. So we, we were stood by the gate, yeah. and then as soon That's as you it. started scrapping, your stick was right by right by the bench, so I just stepped on Next. and grabbed it. I was like, yeah, I love that. He's st- <laughs> He wouldn't give it me back at GB though. He was still like this, using it. <laughs> that that season ends with with Dave Matsus. Uh, sorry, with um, Dave Whistle. Um, and Jonna, this is where you come in because it was Dave Whistle. You were Dave Whistle's one and only signing uh, that summer, and he he was an important piece of the jigsaw to bring you to Sheffield, wasn't he? Yeah, he he was wicked. Whist absolutely loved him to bits. We had him in Cardiff, and then. Um, he didn't come back to Cardiff that year, did he? And then obviously got the got the Sheffield job, um, and kind of started talking to him from probably about February time about coming up. Uh, then at the end of the season, yeah, just decided you know that's that's what I wanted to be and 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 play for Wiss and um, yeah, the rest was kind of history. I think the very first time I actually spoke to you was when I phoned you to say there's bad news and good news. The bad news is. Dave Whistle's no longer our coach, and I could tell the depression in your voice. Um, I said, but the good news is we've employed another one of your teammates, Dave Matsas, and all of a sudden you were you were bouncing again because you had a good relationship with Matty. Yeah, I mean, I think Matty and Whistle are kind of <laughs> cut from the same mould. They, they, they're so alike in styles, the man management, and, uh, you know, Matty was a, was a huge fan of Whistle too, and I think, you know, learned a lot from him and, I think just their their um, attitudes towards the game were kind of the same, and just attitudes to for, to to have fun in the room, but with hard work. And you know, I think I think that was like kind of the first kind of principles that were, you know, we tried getting into Sheffield um, when we all start when when we all kind of joined the year after. Did you did you know at that point the three of you that the room wasn't right and it was going to be a, a room in a club that you three of you were going to have to over the years change? When, when did that start to come into your mindset that hold on a second we're going to have to take over this room and we're going to have to lead this club because you did for so many years. But when did that start? How did it start, Jace? Yeah, I mean, I think Matty, Matty deserves a lot of credit for that. He, I think. It, it was a really good relationship that I know me and Tom didn't know him as long as Jonna, but we seemed to pick up quite quickly that that it was a, you know, he, he, was, he did want it to be a fun place, which was great for us. But also he sort of, he left the accountability within the room, which I think is a is a huge thing. It's hard for a coach to, to hold a whole team accountable. It's, it's easy to do an individual by, you know, sitting them or, or benching them, shouting at them, whatever it is. But when it comes to an actual team, you need you need leaders and you need people who are willing to say things that to really hold the room accountable and as a team. And I think it was just a it was like a natural progression that we set we sensed that I think and we felt really at home in Sheffield and 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 we were willing to take that on and you know it it became something to be proud of and and something like you say got when you look back at it it was, it was a huge turning point and and people that came in you know. Bit, big personalities and and you know came in and bought in we, we had some some amazing players and they just bought in we had we just ended up lucky having good people but it certainly started a lot of credit should go to Matty for, for how he uh, set that up going in that first full year of the three of you Mark um Tessier and Sutter were the two kind of, if you like, big names. But it was Roddy Saric's second year. It was Jody Lehman's second year. They would go on to be, if you like, part of your of your core. And I guess, as Jason says, somebody like a Jody Lehman, he is somebody that would stand up and and make himself heard. Yeah, definitely. You know, like bringing those type of guys in. You know, they, and the key, the, the things about Jody and, and players like that are they hold other guys. They're not afraid to hold other guys accountable. They'll stand up in front of the whole changing room, whereas some guys do find that difficult, you know. Um, but yeah, guys like Jody would call anyone out for the littlest thing, and it, you know, it made guys even if you were the, the top goal scorer or you know a guy who was just plugging away, if you like, and um, you know he'd hold everybody accountable and, and make sure that everyone was on their game every week, you know. And, and even if it was on a Tuesday at practice after maybe having a few beers on a Monday night, 
he'd still hold you accountable if you weren't up to scratch on Tuesday morning and he'd hold you accountable on Saturday night in front of 7,000 in Nottingham or at home, wherever, whoever it was you were playing. He was, you know, Jody, you, you got the likes of Jody, Steve Munn, all those kind of guys that came in over the course of the next couple of years, really. Um, and then they sort of added to the to the group. Like, obviously, there's there's John and Huey and myself, but there was, realistically, you know, Roddy was part of that. You know, there's, you know, other guys that came in and it, and it just sort of, it naturally sort of went along with, you know, with guys coming in and we held everyone accountable in, in the long run to, to not get away with things. I remember, you know, if if it wasn't Huey giving it to someone, it was Jono or me or Lehman or, you know, Mono, there was no way around, you know, getting away with it. You just always got called out and, uh, and you, know, you end up not doing it, basically. I remember after a horrible night at Ice Sheffield, we lost to, uh, I think it was Manchester, Jana, and uh, Mike O'Connor, Matty and I went back to the office and decided, didn't matter who, but we weren't leaving the office until the change had been made. And I think it was Cloutier that, that left us. And we signed some little rat from Caldero in Italy called Ryan Finnerty. But that also was a... Um, a turning point in the year because Finna came in and he had a bit of an instant impact, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And I think, um, <laughs> and as you were saying, like he was another one who, who just bought straight in. Um, and, you know, like when we would call guys out, we used to do it in a way where, where it, it, you know, we, didn't, we wouldn't bully guys, but we would, we would continually get on guys. And just it, it was just easier for them to get on our side because otherwise it, it, was, it was just going to be, you know, a hell of a year for him so it was just a constant get on him and then you know when when you get someone like Finner in we used to use him as our mouthpiece then so he could you know because he never shuts up so we just let Finner ramble on and then if he goes too far we'll be there to pick up the pieces um but it was it just worked it was just a good dynamic and and he he, he fitted into our our room so well and I think the one good thing what Matty did was um, like all the ages were, were pretty much around the same, so we were all kind of the same stages of our career. It made it easier for everybody to kind of you know get on, and and you could uh, really relate to each other. Was it hard for you three guys? Because Johnny, you weren't GB captain at that point. I don't think Mark and Jason, you were in the national team at that point. But is it hard for you three guys in your position in the team to be the mouthpiece in the room and to be the leaders in the room and to? And to call out, if you like, a Tessier or a Sutter or a, or a whoever it was, who had got a little bit of higher standing? Or, or did you find that was something that just came natural? No, I think that's I think just it was... the way we are. Is, is, I, I think we're all about hard work. And, and if we see someone not working hard, then, then we'd say something. You know, it's something that we've kind of built our careers on. And if we see someone else do it, like it, it means nothing to us if, if, if someone's played in the NHL and whatever, but then come over here and, and don't, you know, just kind of mess around and not taking things serious. You, you've got a, you've still got a job to do. You're still part of a team. And, you know, if, you, if you're not working hard, you're letting that team down. So like for us, it was, it was, we used to say, you know, we don't care where you played. We're all in this together. We're all, we're all one big team and we all work the exact same way. Were you were you captain at the end of that year, or was it the start of the next year um, after Maltby? I think it was when Maltz got injured, wasn't it? Yes, yes. So it was the oh, end yeah. of that. It was the end of uh, that oh six oh seven. Yeah, he remembers. Did you? Vote, did you? Yeah. yeah, he remembers. Yeah, yeah. Can we just think back? <laughs> I'm so, let me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell I'm tell us that about, story, Jason. Tell us that story. I'll tell you about John and Matty's relationship. Like me and Tom obviously grafted to be where we are and John is now doing that. Now he has to do that with with his new coaches. But for that little honeymoon period that John had there, this <laughs> what, guy This guy was allowed to fly to Cyprus mid midweek for like three days and nights to sort out his his housing projects, like party in Iron Appa. While we was at home training and oh yeah oh no he's got to sort his business so he's gone Matty yeah right what a that's joke that's the biggest oh, made up story I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> what do you mean you so <laughs> but of all hey, you, kidding, pick, you? you pick Cyprus yeah. <laughs> unbelievable Tomo did uh, did Matty have a soft spot did Tomo have a soft sorry oh. Tomo did uh, Matty have a soft spot for Jenna 
Um, it's yeah, it was frightening how bad it was. I remember when obviously he got made captain, and it was it, he looked over at me and Hughie. Matty left the room, and he's like, "Look, boys, I'm boss around here now. So you <laughs> two keep your mouths shut." <laughs> I said, "I'm gaffer." <laughs> <laughs> But no, going back to what you were talking about there, going back to what you were talking about with someone, yeah. someone calling, you know, you know, John calling someone out, he felt confident enough to do that because he knew me and Huey and Jody were there backing him up. Or if Huey had to call someone out, there was two or three of us all right behind Huey, you know, and it was that was how it kind of worked, really. You know, if Huey was annoyed with someone, then everyone else was jumping on board to say, yeah, you are wrong. You better sort yourself out or, you know, it's going to be a long year for you. Yeah. And then you got someone Matty, like Jody who, who would yeah. do it and, and, you know, well, majority of the time go overboard. But he worked yeah. so hard and was always the best player on the ice and, and won a numerous amount of games. It was, he had every single right to do that. So it was, it was you know, pretty powerful coming from, from someone like Jody. Yeah, he'd been there Matty, and done it already, done... hasn't he? Yeah. Yes, he'd done it with Coventry, hadn't he? Yeah. Matty, of course, jumped into the shoes very late. So that team really wasn't his team as such. <laughs> the next summer, though, he, he made a huge impact with some of the recruitment and, and some of the guys that joined your core and were a core for a number of years. And it's frightening. I didn't realise how many guys had joined the team in that 07, 08 year. Um, so Liam Infinity and Saric returned, but Legui, Talbot, Tate, Dowdy made his uh, debut, Moen, Dagenet and... Uh, and Doug Shepard. I mean, it's been a long time since a coach would sign six or seven guys who all made a massive input. But not just on the ice, they were actually part of your gang as well, weren't they, all of them? Within two, three weeks, it was like they'd like been there years. You know, um, we, we just bonded straight away. Obviously, start of the year, it's probably a little bit different nowadays to what it was back then. You know, we'd go out for a few beers and John had made that his thing that you know, whenever the guys turned up, it was always the first night in Sheffield when everyone was there. We'd always go out wherever it was in Sheffield somewhere and just play pool and have a load of beers. And well, it worked, didn't it? You know, for for however many years, it straight away got it got us off on the right foot. And you know, we all relaxed around each other, and it wasn't you know, it we just it seemed to just work for for many years. And John, we talk about the core, and and those group were a core for a long time, and and that was important that you all knew each other, but you all got on so well. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, as I said, like Matty brought in guys who were, we were all, we were all around that same, same kind of age and, and going through the same things in life. And, um, we were all, all on that, you know, same part of our journey and, and, and it, it just, it just slotted in and it was, um, by far, like we, you know, we talk now, it, it was one of the best times of, of, of our lives, like, you know, going through, through them years, um, you know, and, and, still still stay in touch with all them guys now and um you know leggy i'm long left us is he and obviously roddy's still still around here living so no there's some real really good people yeah take us inside that dressing room jason and uh the the characters that was in it what was legui and talbot really like what was uh you know we see the goofiness of dagenet but uh but i, I guess you know they, they were three big characters take us inside that room I think starting off with uh, with Danger, he, he already had that nickname before he got to the country. Um, he walked in and he's like, oh, hey, I'm uh, I'm Dagger, I think he said. And they were like, no, you're Danger. Um, I think he'd come late because he'd, he'd been to a wedding or, or something like that. So he yeah, walked in, he started talking French and we were like, not happening, no, <laughs> Danger. <laughs> But well, he was like a big bear, wasn't he? So you did, didn't, you didn't want to push him too far on the first day in case he beat the shit out of me. So um, he was one. He's the first guy to have a belly, but abs on top of his belly. <laughs> 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 he was, he was just an animal. He was, he was a great player. He could fight. He was, he was a wicked guy. Loved to drink. He was just like, um, he was perfect. So when he walked in, he had a name. Um, you know, a guy like Joey, like. You couldn't. The, he was more horizontal than the bench. He just nothing phased him. I think the only time I seen him get mad was somebody cut his uh, cut his sweats up before a game or before. Thing. I honestly thought he was going to murder someone or bottle someone. He always uh, 
you know, unless it was before a game, he always had a bottle of Corona in his hand or a bottle of Bud or whatever was in the fridge at the time. Um, Mid-video meeting, you'd just hear like a... <laughs> and he'd be cracking a beer open. <laughs> and then you got leggy, you know, he'd, he'd go out on the Sunday and you might not see him till Wednesday, but he'd be the best player on the ice. He might have come to Tuesday's practice, maybe slept, walked in and was just lighting it up. It was just... It was surreal, really. When you look back, it was just, they were, like Jonah said, they were amazing times. And honestly, I, don't, I just, I can, I can't, I would put our careers in that time against, against anybody of that time, any team, any, for the way we lived, I don't think there's ever been a better generation. And, and as a team to enjoy that and have the success we did while having so much fun. It was just amazing, honestly. It was like a, it was like somebody had written it, and it and it was sort of planned. That's how it felt. And Mark, and Mark, were those two things that Jason just referred to really important? That you were winning, you were having fun, but you were having fun, and that's why you were winning. It, it kind of went hand in hand. Absolutely, you know, we, we all bought into the fact that you know, if you work hard, you can have fun, and and everybody on that team worked hard. And if they didn't, it was, you know, they soon heard about it. Put it that way, and uh, you know, we had. You know, we were referring to a lot of like going out and partying and stuff like that. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't massive throughout the week, but we had something called Mandatory Monday where, you know, every single guy had to come on a Monday night to wherever bar we went to in Sheffield. And, you know, even if it was just for one drink, you had to come and you had to turn up and show your commitment to the team. You know, you'd have guys who would turn up for an hour, have two beers, leave. You'd have Jonna who was there till four in the morning, and you know it was. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and then you know, and then that you know that kind of and it, it did it made it, it it set out the team and how we were going to be, and you know we were going to have lots of fun on the ice, but also enjoy it off the ice as well, you know. And that was definitely the key to to success back then. And, and I think sometimes I'm not saying I don't know how it is now in the locker room and stuff like that, and maybe on other teams and around there. But if you, if if guys aren't having fun then you're not going to get the best out of them for me. Hmm. John, how important was it that we signed Ashley Tater, another Brit, a, a top-end player? We signed him just before the start of that season, just after the World Championships. Huge, because, I, mean, I mean, Ash was ripping up the league for a long time there, wasn't he? And, and you know, he was, he, was, he was one of our, you know, go-to guys. I think he, he led the team most years. He was here, you know, uh, within a couple of points of Leggy and Joey. Um, and obviously being a British player as well, given that extra kind of, it, it's just that extra worth, isn't it? And he was, I think, I think we all learned a lot from Ash too about you know how to how to win and and um, probably a bit about the professionalism of the game and and um, you know they they done so much in in Coventry with Tomo. Um, he kind of taught us how to you know obviously have fun, but you know where the work needs to go in and and Matty was obviously on board with that. I mean, we used to we used to skate all the time. We never had many days off under under Matty. Um I think was Ash Ash was assistant coach pretty soon after that, wasn't it? Wasn't he when he when Shep he was well. came in? Shep he was there. It was Sheppy well, to begin with, wasn't it? Shep was there, yeah. Went, I think it was Ash was the was the assistant coach, wasn't he? So yeah. you know it was for you know, as Tom was said, as as much as we kinda we say we went out and partied, you know, we weren't going out kind of, not even on a Wednesday night, were we? It wasn't towards the end of the week. It was, it was always at the beginning, um, most of the time. Um, <laughs> yeah, have you remembered? Have you remembered something? But we turned up, we... <laughs> no. Feel free to jump in, Mark, today. feel free. Remember, remember we got, remember Oki called us and he was like, your cars have just been seen outside the Gypsy Queen. It was like right. It was a Monday, and I think we'd 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 lost in the Challenge Cup the night before. It's like right, yeah, fans are going mad. All oh, right, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. The emails were, were you always... grateful? Were you grateful there was no Twitter back in those days? We we, we wouldn't oh, have survived, would we? No way. That saved lives. <laughs> But no. But that, Let me just get. I, swear, I think even the trouble other people would have got us in. I would have got us in trouble anyway because I I love that stuff so. 
couple of figures yeah. for you. The year, bef- the year before, 06, 07, we finished fourth, 68 points. But that year, we finished second in the league and we'd increased the points to 78. But that was the year that, of course, we then went on and, and won the, the first trophy, the playoffs. We beat Manchester 9-8 in the quarterfinals. It was a bit tighter than I thought. Beat Cardiff 2-1. And then um, in uh, Lehman's third season with us, he, he shuts Coventry out in the uh, he shuts Coventry out in the final. We'll, we'll talk about your feelings about the playoffs that that playoff run in a second. But John, how important was it to land that first trophy? Massively. I mean, obviously, it was you know it was it was the start of the rebuild, wasn't it? As, as you said earlier, you know, Matty came in, but it was kind of uh, wasn't really his team to begin with. He came in so late. Um, so then, you know, that second season, then it was it was all kind of everything he he built up and uh everything he wanted to put in place so the rebuild had really really started and and yeah it was i think you know without that uh does that core kind of stay together for so long it was it was it was the making of that core jason your thoughts on that playoff weekend that first weekend and and beating cardiff beating coventry two pretty good clubs to beat to win your trophy as well yeah it was it was that that first one obviously will always stand out and I've got a couple of pictures there in the garage. I've been had some time to do things and, and two of the pictures up is, is one of myself, John and Finn. I think we played together at the end of that. And then one of me and Tomo with the trophy, obviously we've been together for a while. So that one really stands out and like you said, I think was it Coventry we chased all year, um, for the league that that year and yeah, you know, was. we were right there all, all year, so it would have been easy to kind of just, you know, get down and, and then sort of let them have our number. So it was huge. They were so good at that time um, that being that close to them was already a great step. But then to, to obviously pip them to a, to a playoffs, and like we said, I mean, we definitely made sure we enjoyed that one. And then I think, like Jonna says, if we didn't win that, who knows what it would have looked like. But that, that propelled us into, you know, that, that made us even closer than we already were and, and uh, was really the start of something special. I remember Lehman just being just off the charts that weekend, uh, conceding just the one goal in those those two games, Mark. And uh, that, that was that kind of leadership that, that, that you needed. Yeah, definitely. You know, he was, he, he just seemed to have another level to go to when it got to weekends like that. Um, you know, and especially with it being his old club Coventry, he probably had a little bit, you know, something else to prove to them. And, but I think as well, we all did really, because we'd been chasing them all year. They'd won the league and uh, we've been in the position now where we've won the league and it's harder to go to the playoffs because you've sort of got a sense of achievement already. Whereas when we'd finished second, it was just like salt in the wounds. And we just thought there's no way we're not, you know, we're not going to win this. Um, you know, you just had that little, little bit extra almost. And, uh, yeah, he was, you know, the whole weekend, he was unbelievable. Um, you know, from you, you could just see in his eye, he had a look in his eye. He was just different. He was even more switched on than he normally was. And, uh, you know, even more tuned in, really. But, yeah, he was he was a key part to us to winning that one. And, obviously, the start of, of the trophy starting to come in again then. And the first, we'll talk about the celebrations after winning, because I would imagine they were pretty wild. But the first time going back to the arena and having those thousands of people waiting for you... That's a special moment at any time, isn't it, John? Oh, I was, yeah, yeah, that was mental. It was, and I remember, I think the bus stopped round the corner. And everyone was like, we, "We've got to get up on the roof." Oh, Jesus Christ! Here we go. <laughs> had big pointy shoes on and slipping everywhere. I don't like heights anyway. I think I sat on the roof because I was scared I was going to fall coming down. But no, it was. That, I mean, that was unreal. And, and you know, coming from coming from Cardiff, with you know the the, I think. Back then, that old drink was two and a half thousand people. Um, you know, it, it'd never be, never seen any, any, anything like that. Um, so that was that was pretty special. And you know, over the years, there's there's, there's thousands of guys who, who go down there and support them trophies. It's crazy, it's unreal. Finno, Finno was half naked, and he drove the bus, didn't he? The final couple yeah. of hundred yards into the uh, into it was it was a those were just great emotional highs, weren't they, Jason? Yeah, I mean, I don't think we can go too far into what was going on on those buses. Um, 
at that time. I, I, I probably can't even remember half of it to be fair. No, I definitely can't. I, they all they all sort of blend into one, and the headaches just got worse as we got older. Um, but yeah, like you know, things like thinner driving the bus and just you felt you felt untouchable and you felt you felt so appreciated when you came you came back to that and at that time when when we did only have sort of three lines and and every team was running three lines everyone was involved and in the team you had you didn't have um you, and i don't think you would have at that time anyway but i think now with how many players there is and having all those lines sometimes some some people don't feel as big a part of it um when you're winning and but at that time, certainly everyone played their part. I mean, three lines is, is nothing now. And when you look at it, and sometimes you're just going to games with 12 and 13 players, which is, is quite unbelievable, to be fair. But, yeah, it was for people to come out. And, you know, we, we didn't set an alarm for what time we were coming on. We'd, we'd go in that bar next to, next to Nottingham. And I think I put we are the champions on about 18 times on the jukebox in a row. <laughs> And it, and it went down really well the first year, but when we did it the year after, I nearly caused a riot. <laughs> so I think, that kind of yeah. that kind of kicked us out of Nottingham that year. So we were home a little early on. <laughs> but I thought it was going to get murdered, but it was uh, no special times and just yeah. I wish I wish that we we had more video of it and just could remember it a little bit better because um, I'm sure there's some things that, that that have gone out of my head and you know that were just unbelievable. What do you remember of it, Mark? Your first trophy? Well, just you know, going off what what the guys have said there. Like, obviously, it's you know, it's a huge relief to get that that big one. And and uh, obviously, I've got I've got the same photo that Huey's got there with me and him because we'd been together the whole our whole career really, and and growing up as well. Um, but yeah, you know, you get straight away you get back into the changing room. There's a big rush of of all that, and then you know you calm down a bit on the bus and. Like Huey said, I think you know we went into into Nottingham's pub, which did not go down very well, and uh, but we were just we had that, and that wasn't I won't say arrogance about it because we weren't really I didn't think we were arrogant at all, but we just it was more the fact that they used to annoy us that much Nottingham that we just used to try and rub it in their face a little bit more when we you know we'd we'd earned the right to rub it in their face and uh, yeah you know getting on buses and there's you know we used to have something called party bus where. I don't know whether Huey wants me to say it. We used to strip down and run naked up and down the bus, and <laughs> <laughs> but that was, you know, things, uh, things like that are what you know. I can guarantee every guy on that team will remember Huey run up and down it naked and ra- grabbing bits of Ron's cold meat, ham, and stuff, and slapping people on the head with it. <laughs> I know, I know, Finner that- will remember that forever because I put his suit on when I was naked, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> But that's that honestly, when he was a coach. That, yeah, when he was a coach, he used to put his jacket on like he was all professional, and I put his gear on when he had no no clothes, and he lost his mind. He's like, get the f- back of the bus. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, hey, the one the one I remember in Nottingham. Sorry, someone was John. I think was that the year Bob Phillips had had put us all on two weeks' notice. Yeah. First, and yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then he, he came in the room and he he was say, saying all kinds of stuff. After I think we'd lost one game or something, you know, in in a massive run of wins, and Bob comes in. I think we lost to Manchester and just put us all on two weeks' notice and whatever. So we end up winning the playoffs and John goes <laughs> two weeks' notice. That Bob, you whatever it was, <laughs> and he yeah. stood right outside the door. <laughs> Comes in, oh, he came. What, what's that, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Just crazy Bob, times. Nice I mean, you probably know since he was. Yeah, hey, Bob, hey, Bob, hey, have a beer. I don't know who said that, Bob. I'm not sure who it was. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> Huey. <laughs> I think he gave that two weeks notice after a loss on a Saturday. We went to Manchester on a Sunday and I think he realised it was a bad idea and he had to bring two grand in cash with him. And once we won it, he was, sorry, boys. And uh, yeah, how'd you went? Yeah, he did. He did, yeah. He, said, yeah. Boys, he said, boys, he said, boys, I put myself on two weeks notice too. We're like, what? You're the owner. <laughs> Get you should have said yesterday, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> we thought it was first. <laughs> I think I think he even put Betty Ware in the secretary. She was unnoticed. Yeah. Everybody was unnoticed. Yeah, and Dan, and Dan Ancliffe. Oh, pointed at Dan Ancliffe. Yeah. 
<laughs> the volunteer <laughs> equipment manager. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh god he, that was on one of the high days okay we move on 2809 <laughs> did that Jana, did that playoff win if you like then say hey we're ready now for which in our club is the holy grail is to go on and win a championship which was so important and did you feel going into that 0809 season that that we were ready to deliver and to and to beat coventry and, and to win a championship 100 percent and it was i think after those playoffs it was uh, you know the guys were talking about getting getting rings done and this side and the other and i can remember matty said you know why don't we why don't we wait and 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 we'll get we'll we'll get rings for the league next year and but it, it was just the way he said it and the way everyone believed and was like yeah no we're doing it we never ever got the rings did we but it was uh i, I didn't big. saw a picture Okay. Yeah, we sort of picked it. They got Sorry, the sign. <laughs> I, got, I got a size up and stuff. It was nice. I think I think they got made like fifteen years later. But yeah, and we all bought we bought them ourselves. You bought one as well, Susie, I think, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I bought one. I don't yeah, think I've ever. I think I've got two. I've I've got two, and yeah, you have to pay from. Yeah, I don't think the badger was ever going to play for those, do you? Oh, I don't think he was ever no. going to do yeah. that. But it me was. And John, me and John couldn't afford it. We were painting. Yeah, so <laughs> we were rolling. Couple, but no, I mean, going back, couple of changes. It was, it was, go on, Johnny, you go. No, I mean going back, it was. I think it was. You, you did have a feeling that that you know we'd started something special, and um, you know there was a there was a call that was was made. You know, with with, with Roddy and Jody and uh, Leggy. He made you know Matt. He made a huge signing signing um, Baz Scott Bassick and. It was you could see that there was something special going on. I was going to say the changes. Tessie left. Um, Cook Shank good. eventually came in. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> good. Uh, Nathan Gillies came in for a short time, and then Cook Shank took him over. Um, and then Basic from Manzano, and and, and Basic was a huge addition, wasn't he, uh, Mark? Yeah, you know, obviously we'd we played against. And don't be all, afraid yeah, to talk about Tessie as well if you want. Don't be afraid. Yeah, well, well, you talk about calling guys out. I called Tessier out in a bar once. I think it was a Super Bowl party, and we got into a heated heated match because oh, we'd yeah. all been, yeah, we'd all been like winding him up a little bit about Mark Smith, who was in Cardiff. He just signed a massive deal in the DEL, and Tess had been talking about this DEL deal that he was getting, and we were like, well, it was it was really irritating me that he was too busy focusing on next year as opposed to what what was coming this year and what we had to deal with, you know, where we were going at that point. And end up calling him out, and I called him out for something else about sn- sniveling at assists. I think it was, and uh, he, lo- he he lost it. And I don't know. The only thing he could come back with was something like, oh, "You just keep getting beat wide." And I was like, "Well, yeah, that's fine, but at least I don't snivel assists." Sure. So it was, uh, yeah. No. So anyway, that was that one. <laughs> but Basic, Scotty Basic. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, Baz. You know, we'd we'd played against him when he was in Manchester, and uh, I think my first memory of Baz was was when he uh, broke Hilly's foot. Um, yeah, he, he let a, he let a clapper go from the point, and 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 Hilly just crumbled, literally, and didn't move. Um, you know, obviously, and then we we soon realised he had a bit of a, a rocket of a shot, and uh, not just not just that, but he was just you know he was mean, he was hard to play against, and uh, yeah, he was he was a great addition for Matty. Obviously, I remember I think we played Manchester. I think it was in the playoffs in Manchester. When we not when we beat him. He was he signed him in Canadian Grill in the middle of Altrincham, outside the shop. We pulled up as a team bus and we we're getting like food and stuff after the game, and and Baz was talking to Matty down a dark alley down the side of Canadian Grill, I think it was, and uh, yeah, and obviously the rest was history. He came over and you know he was a he was a great addition to the to the unit on the back end, and uh, yeah, it was, you know, I think I remember the most thing I, the thing I remember most about that summer was. Like Jonas said, you know how how much that first trophy just like even spurred you on even more to go and get the big one of the league. And uh, you know, I remember working. You know, everyone was calling each other, making sure everyone was working out all summer. And you know, we all knew when we turned back up in in August, um, it was you know it was go time, and, and it was game one, not not starting at game fifteen when we you know potentially lost the league. We we were starting from game one and. Uh, you know, we set out the store pretty early, I think, the following year. And Huey wasn't even close at the end. I mean, we win the league by 11 points. Coventry and Nottingham, 78. We were 89. 
Um, so we'd go on to win the league in the playoffs. You know, we never even got out of the Challenge Cup group that game that year. We got we got knocked out of the Challenge Cup just like in the first month of the year, and it was all over. But but the league, Huey, was just what everybody was so focused on. Yeah, and I think I think especially in those years, I think it was maybe a blessing that we weren't in the Challenge Cup at that time, um, especially to get that you know that first league. I'm not saying I wouldn't have liked to win the Challenge Cup as well, but. I think it was probably less of a distraction with with our eyes on the bigger prize at that time. Um, but yeah, it was. Sorry, I've I've completely lost my train of thought there. But it's okay. Um, we'll move on to the captain. The, the, yeah. the, the league is so the league is so important, John, at our club, isn't it? I'm sure it is at every club, but but we focus on that league championship so much, and then to land that first one for you as well as captain, um, it, it was the start of a monumental period of time. Yeah, it was mad, and I, I remember we were we played in Newcastle, and we when we won that. Yeah, that's that's where I was going with it, yeah. And before, I mean, <laughs> we weren't even thinking we could win, win win the league. And then after the game, was did Edinburgh beat Coventry, maybe or something like that? Yeah, um, that was and it. Yeah. I'd, and I'd, had, I'd been in. Yeah, I was doing Sky in Newcastle, and I'd done the Sheffield Newcastle game in Sky. You'd all cleared off, and then we had to pull the, we had to call you to bring the bus back so we that's, could interview Matty and it. a couple of you again. Yeah, that's it, because, yeah, I mean, real. we were done quite early. We went into that pub, didn't we, in Newcastle? So we were all <sighs> sat yeah. there waiting for probably, you know, a good 45 minutes, I'd say. Um, and then, yeah, the news came through that Edinburgh had, uh, had won. And uh, yeah, we couldn't believe it. I mean, I, God knows how many games were left, but I think, I think even after that, I think we lost probably three or four games after that, after clinching. And I think our record was was pretty disgusting last season. Yeah, eighty nine points. Edinburgh in the quarter final of the playoffs, beating Cardiff again five two in the uh, in the semi finals, and then um, Munner and Finner score uh, two nil against Nottingham in, in Jody's. In Jody's last game, Mark, your your thoughts on that playoff weekend? What a monumental weekend that was! Yeah, obviously, you know it was we, we'd won the league and and we were now going for the double, and that was driving us on. I think uh, again, Lehman had that, that that look in his eye, and uh, you know I remember the the, the semi um, Vother running around everywhere, and I think Danger. I'm sure he'll remind you of this. Scored an empty net from behind his own goal line. I think he was uh, yeah. I, mean, I think they were coming hard. I think and he ended up icing it and it went in luckily for him and then uh, obviously going to the final yeah we, we just had you know bearing in mind we had like 5d back then and it was a long old year and three lines of forwards it wasn't like we were, we were stacked and, and fresh if you like it was it was coming off a long year of, of a lot of battling hard and a lot of bruised bodies but um yeah i just remember being so focused and uh, and sort of whatever happened there was no way we were losing that game you know jody started off for us and and then obviously you know it, you, s- you soon see his look on his face and when he goes out for warm up and it's like a switch he uh, you know it sets the tone for everybody else and then somehow munner seems to you know somehow scores a knuckle puck and uh, you know he was uh, obviously that and then and then finna gets one it was yeah, it was it was a disgusting goal as well, and I think they've got Sky have got like yeah, a wow. slow mo version, a slow mo version <laughs> <Yeah>. from behind. <laughs> well, yeah, no, it was. That's yeah, one of my favorite. Then, it's one of my favorite ever bits of commentary because you just don't expect him to shoot it. He's going, he's I going, he, and then he, he lets it go. Yeah, I, and I think I talked to Danny Myers about that because I think that he was one of the defensemen as well, and they they saw it was Munna coming right up the middle, and I think it was two guys wide went. And they just sort of parted and let Munna go right down the middle and took a clapper from the inside. It was, it was me and Finner. Me and Finner went, went, went wide like that and drove through. And Munna like pulled up. And the 2D yeah. just went with us. And he was he was all yeah. alone. He had a, a, a whole lane to shoot <laughs> shoot at. It's yeah, the, yeah, yeah, that was it. it. It's tough to tough to gap up on Munna chopping up the ice with his straight legs and two, <laughs> two, two knee braces on. Look like a robot skating up the ice. And I'm like, what is up? Remember that first time we came in and we played, we had, we had no ice and we played footballer in that uh, yeah. in the grass <laughs> yeah, on Sheffield. Yeah. And he put his yeah, two yeah, braces yeah. on. The next thing, Robocop <laughs> is running down the wing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we had a we had a full on game like slide tackling and that. <laughs> that was it. Just un- unbelievable. 
To beat Nottingham in a final, what what's that like? I mean, for me, it's everything. But I'm 300 feet up in the stands. For you guys, you're right in the battle to to beat the Panthers, the the enemy in a final in their own building and shut them out, Mark. Oh, you know what? There's you know, like you say, for me, there was no better place to play. And, you know, and obviously Sheffield was our home rink, but I used to love love going to Sheffield, uh, going to Nottingham. Sorry, like honestly, you'd, we'd be queuing up in the corridor, and you could just hear the booing and you know, me and you used to sort of stand right behind the goalie there and waiting to go out and warm up and you're just getting abused off the fans. But, you know, they can abuse you as much as you want. If anything, it just drives you on to just be a little bit better. Just be that little bit more. Don't give them anything to, you know, and it just when you step on for warm up and straight away, it's like booing and hissing and, you know, and then, you know, come game time, you can hear the, you know, the orange army in the corner there just, you know, rolling away. It was, uh, yeah, there was no way they were beating us. I think, if I remember correctly, this game was, was this the one where there was a little bit of a brawl in warm up? Yeah, yeah, just before warm up. I remember yeah, uh, yeah. Nick Rothwell. I was doing upstairs on Sky and Nick Rothwell and Doug Christensen, whatever happened to him. Yeah. Um, yeah. They were doing their, their little talk and then all of a sudden, he, he, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, <laughs> uh, it, it started and I think it was Clarkie involved and for, for none yeah, of you yeah. as well. well Sh- Sharpie just used to patrol the red line back in warm up and. Uh, and that's, I think he'd slash someone. I think he'd slash Clarkie and then uh, Nadir came over and I think a few others came over and before you knew it, it was almost a full team brawl in, in, in warm-up. But I, I remember Matty saying as well, like Nottingham, because we were supposed to be the home team, but they would pushed. So they were the home team and they wanted to wear their home jerseys. So Matty just gave it all to them. And he just said, you do what you want to do. It's not going to affect us. We're just, we're winning this game no matter what. You just, you know, if you want to be the home team, you be it. And we'll wear whatever jerseys you want to wear, and you know, and and the second we went on warm up and that ball started, and we we just all came off absolutely crying, laughing. We were all like, got in the locker room. We were like, obviously we were focused, but we just knew we had them. We knew they were that fired up. They'd just be, you know, they weren't focused enough, or they'd just take stupid penalties. And we had them exactly where we wanted them, basically. Were you in the middle of that, Jason? I tried. I definitely tried. I think I think they'd lit up a team the night before. I can't remember if it was Hull had got there or something like that, and they oh, destroyed yeah, them like ten one or something like that. And they were doing they were and doing they, all this, weren't they? Yeah, they were doing all kinds of silly celebrations. So I think that was what I think Crocker had told them. Kind of, there'll be no no silly celebrations tonight, boys, and whatever. So yeah. It, it was good. that stuff, like like I say, like Tom just said, we just come out crying, laughing. It was it was just unreal. Like especially in Nottingham, it, you know, the playoffs at, at their home ring, they should be, you know, it's why they've had success with it. But there was just no better feeling. And coming out, you were like a a pantomime villain kind of thing. It was just it was just funny. And but that feeling, when I look back at, it, I can't even when I've seen video and stuff recently, and and all the videos that you you guys have been putting on. I can't put myself in that frame of mind where I, I literally didn't give a shit. I honestly did not care one bit what was going on on the ice. I was ready to, to fight anybody. To I'd, I'd, have, I'd have crawled in the crowd at some point, so I was that fired up. It was just, I just can't put myself in that in that frame of mind. It, it's it's madness, really. But yeah, it was that makes the biggest me smile to Was that the day. biggest rivalry? Was that the biggest rivalry for you? Because people talk about the Nottingham rivalry now not being as big, as big. But I had the feeling that for you, especially you, it, it was a massive thing. It got under your skin. Yeah, I loved it. Like I say, I just, there was for me, I was so like, I always felt like I had to prove something to someone um, throughout my whole career, whether it was to be in the team with our coach or you know, people start start chirping in the crowd and that. So those those points to prove. But yeah, I was I love that side of the game where, you know, you just just jumping someone or getting jumped. It was it was so much fun at that time. Like I said, I can't can't even imagine getting punched in the face right now. I'd probably cry. But um, it, it was just massive. I think from the outside looking in now, the 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 Cardiff Sheffield um, rivalry seems seems to be a lot. A lot more familiar to, to that time. What we had. We you talk about that. jumping into the crowd. One person who did jump or tried to jump into the crowd that night was was Jody right at the end, and 
on our little on our little Nottingham thing we did the other day with with the Nottingham guys, they were saying bad sportsmanship by Lehman. But I, I think that was one of the most endearing qualities of Jody that he went straight over there. And Mark, you were the first guy on top of him when yeah. when he did it. Just talk us yeah. through Jody that that emotion, his hatred for Nottingham as well. And well, that was that was his way of giving it back. You know, the fans had tried to get on his case all year. They beaked him and tried to get in his ear and he just didn't let it, you know, affect him in, in whatever way. And, you know, that was a bit of a big two two fingers right up at him when he went charging. You know, we, we didn't even know what was going on. We were like, Layman, where are you going? <laughs> it was still like a second left. <laughs> we were chasing him. Yeah, we all came off the bench. And our fans are this way. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. We were going towards the net. There was like a U-turn to go chase him again. And then, yeah, obviously there's the famous picture, I think, with the one fan just sticking the two fingers up who clearly wasn't very happy and then he was getting told by his mum to sit down and uh you know but that's the way Jody was he was he was he was pretty humble to be fair but when when you gave it to him and he uh and he came out on top he'd soon rub it in your face I think we genuinely thought for years that that woman was his mum but I think it ended up being his wife didn't it, it was... <laughs> <laughs> Lucky which made it all the better I... yeah <laughs> Jonah Jonah beating beating Nottingham in Nottingham in any game, he's, he's fantastic, but in a player final, he's, he's something special, isn't it? Oh, honestly, that atmosphere is absolutely crazy. It's so intense. And with the, I mean, that playoff final is, is the last thing before the summer. Every, every single person in that game is, is, you know, hanging by a thread, but you've got 60 minutes left in you. And, you know, when you get to play Nottingham for... You know, in a one-off game for a trophy it is, and you know, especially back then, there was the rivalry was was you know, I wouldn't say it's dead now, but it's, it's definitely different. Um, it, it just had a bit of everything, and, and they were they were such fun games to play in. Like we used to say, we used to struggle if we played Nottingham on a Saturday and then we would play like an Edinburgh on a Sunday, because it, it was you were you were so up there on that Saturday night. And your emotions were crazy. The next day, you were just mentally absolutely drained. And I think I think that game was one of the most draining games ever. It, you know, it really was, and it was it was tight the whole way through. Jody kept us in it. Um, you know, from the first shift to the last shift, it was it was just it was all going. Um, just what a way to what a way to end end, end the season that was. And Jason, the core, as we call it now, it was kind of going to get split up a little bit at the, at the end of that year because we lost Munner, we lost Baz, we lost Lehman. And and nine ten then actually politically was a bad year. The financial problems, it was like, was Bob going to sell? Wasn't he going to sell? Uh, which resulted at the end of the year in myself, Matty, Mike, all, all kind of leaving the club for a short period of time. And But it was building up all the way through. And it was a shame because coming off that double year, to then have that nine ten year, it, it, you just felt you wanted to kick on, and unfortunately, you weren't allowed to. Yeah, it was it was a weird one. I just remember we just couldn't couldn't get going at all. Um, right from the start, it was like we were good, we were bad, we were good, we were bad, and I think that's the year we had the Continental Cup, didn't we? Um, I seem to remember going somewhere, and we did quite well there. I think that's the year we got to those finals. Um, Super final, yeah. Um, so you know that was fun, but yeah, it was a, it was a strange year, and certainly coming off the high of what we'd done the previous two years, but it never, it didn't feel like the good times were gone. Still, it was we still had a good feel, and we still had good people, different people, but um, like you say, the core was still strong. So I think once we got through that, we knew we were going to be okay. We'll, we'll quickly skip through 09, 010 then because that that was that was robust, <clears throat> and the start of ten eleven w- was robust as well because Ben Simon comes in, um, and you have to tip your hat to him. He came into a politically tinderbox situation and uh, and seemed to galvanise you guys. I wasn't there for the beginning part of that, but your your first John, your first reaction to him, and then Mark Jason, how important that call was for for Ben. In uh, in in those early days, when quite frankly, Ben didn't know what he'd let himself in for early on, Jonah. Yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, I mean, 
I think it was such a tough job that Ben Simon had kind of walked into. Um, I don't think he realised quite the problems that that, that uh, was there. Um, but it was it was a bit standoffish at first, wasn't it? Like when he when he first came in, I don't think he knew. Maybe I, I wouldn't say he didn't like us all, but it, it, I think he certainly he thought he'd heard some some stories and this and the other, and he wanted to figure us out for himself and. I think within the first three weeks, he 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 absolutely loved us all and 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 loved loved the you know what what we were all about and um, you know I think we've said before I I think he was he was the the one person who really taught you the professionalism um, towards the game and and he was he was unreal like he wouldn't let you pick up a phone call in Tinsley's if someone was calling during a meeting or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife, I didn't know the meeting had started and Stacey was pregnant so I was like he started this meeting and I, was, I didn't realise obviously I'm there eating my bacon and whatever and I'm like oh, on set my phone's ringing and he's like he's like are you fucking burn a hole in me so I probably didn't do us any favours from that day well, um, you know how some... you know how we you know how we used to talk about Matty being or John being Matty's boy within about a uh, Three months, Huey could do no wrong with Ben Simon. Honestly, he was like, he, he didn't even need to come to team meetings. <laughs> Best year of my life. Huh? <laughs> but was that you actually got the GB call up that year, didn't you, Jason? I, th I think. Or was maybe it the year before? The, the year the before. The year or two before that, yeah. But um, like, I think John hit the nail on the head. He taught certainly made it taught me how to be a professional and I think him being a center and it, and the style he played I think was so easy for me to to relate to and and try and you know obviously I wasn't as good as Ben but I, I tried molding myself on that and how, how intense he was and how hard he worked was was quite contagious for me um I just remember his first shift and in Sheffield and he went out and he he rocked G, I think, and Rock Brew Bar, and 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 the whole building was like, oh, who's this guy? And like, and we were the same. We were like, holy, shit. like, didn't see this coming. So mm -hmm. he kind of set the to set the tone for me, and and I think for the team. But like Jonah said, it took him a few a few weeks to warm to us. But then I think he realised kind of how important we were to the team. Yeah. And Mark Munner came back as well, didn't he? That year he had his year in the Asian <laughs> League. Yeah, obviously, you know, you know, you don't need to. Say a lot of Mark Munner. He's you know he's one of the best defensemen to play for the Steelers as a, as a defensive defenseman, and I looked up to him. You know, loads. He, he helped me out so much through my game, and and uh, yeah, and obviously Ben put his trust in Munner on the back end to sort of manage that and at that end there. And you know, it was you know, talking about Ben. I think from my point of view, I, I probably never felt as important on a team as I did when Ben Simon was the coach. He was really good at making you feel really important and like I remember um, that that was the year uh, that my second son Harley was born and um, I didn't make a trip up to Dundee and I think we like scraped by like a, we might have won by a couple of goals maybe an empty net at the end and uh, he phoned he phoned me immediately after the game obviously to check in make sure everything was all right but and he was you know he was he was straight away he was like oh we really missed you tonight and I was like really I was like you can't miss me I was just a stay at home boring defenseman you no he was like yeah yeah we really miss you tonight we really could have used you tonight and uh he just you know he made you feel he had a really good way of making you feel important and and wanted and, and it just sort of you know, pushed me on and made me feel you know fairly feel good about yourself and I know for a fact he will 100% say the same thing about that you know he was Huey was that was probably Huey's best year I think for the Steelers and under Ben and, and he was yeah like he said he's because he's played the same kind of position as him he helped read off him and he, he led by example every night you know he'd, he'd make a hit he'd bench himself he was the first guy to bench himself even though he was the coach um you know we know we know other guys now that are player coaches and uh, they just put themselves on the power plate <clears throat> Hewitt <laughs> 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 well yeah you know, he was, he, I thought, yeah he was I thought you were talking about your Manchester Phoenix year after you'd left us <laughs> Jeez, let's not talk about that. Yeah, we don't need to talk about that. Quickly, move on. Yeah, Jonna, when I, I must admit, I I didn't know him too well in the in the first half of the year. I'd done a couple of Sky interviews, but then when I came back, I, I quickly realised that how mentally strong he was because he, he 
the, the ownership change had happened by then, but what he must have had to have gone through, not just as a player, he was he was like a proper bloke, wasn't he? And he, he, he took everything on that came his way. Definitely. And, and like, I mean, that was, that, that was a stressful summer for all of us. And, and, but, you know, we didn't have one tenth of the responsibility that, that he had. It, it was, it was crazy. And the job that he did, and it was, he, he never, ever brought it in, in, into the room ever. And if anything did, it was just, boys, we don't need to worry about that. We've got, we got a game to play. We, you know, we worry about playing hockey. We do our job this way and that's it. And he did. It was, you know, he got rid of all all the worries that, that were there. You knew that he had your back on every single thing as long as you, you gave your all for that team. And, um, you know, he, you can see what, how, how he's done so well now in, 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 his, in, in his coaching career. And, and, and I'm sure he'll go, he'll go all the way, way to the top. More, more turmoil, if you like, in the summer. Reagan out, uh, Tony Smith in, and um, then with Ryan coming back as as player coach. Before, before we talk about that, one player that left at the end of the Ben Simon year was was Joey Talbot, and I think when we talk about Laguay, we sometimes forget just how good Talbot was. And I know how much you guys all admired him, both as a player and as a as a bloke. Um, and it's so easy just to talk leggy, leggy, leggy. But but Talbot was was a special player, wasn't he? And and he was missed the, the moment he left. I don't think we we replaced him for for a long time, did we? Really, and he was he was hard to replace. He was he was he wasn't the prettiest of players, but he 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 was always in the right place at the right time. He knew the game. Um, he just he he made it look easy. Um, you know, and and he was he was actually really quick. He didn't he didn't look quick, but he was. Um, and he just he scored so many big goals for us, um, and was such just such a smart player and tough too, like skinny but real yeah. tough. Yeah, Jason, your thoughts on on Joey? Yeah, he was <clears throat> he was he was special. Um, like John has said, I don't think he really got replaced at any point after he left. He he just. He was so weird, it's hard to describe. I don't think I've ever seen another player like him. Like John has said, he, he looked like he couldn't move. Like I know he had some sort of groin surgery before he came to us. So his one leg didn't stride out quite as far as the other. So when we first saw him on the ice, he looked like a penguin, like waddling around. He didn't, he didn't cut his stick. He just, he'd just be like, ah, that's fine. Just tape it up, get on the ice. And he just had like this off-pace shot that just seemed to find a hole under the goalie's arm all the time. So... The knuckle shot, he used to call it, I think, or the whiffle. Yeah, I think that was what you were talking yeah. to you, Paul. I think what you learned from hey. him. Hey. Yeah. Was how to shoot. I'll, I'll set it just, up you keep just, hitting him away. He just had this, yeah, this off-pace shot, and you you would, you would could be playing the biggest game of, of what seemed like the biggest game in the world to you, and... It was like it was just a Tuesday morning practice for Joey, but an hour away from cracking a beer, he just he just sit there, sort of his leg would be sort of bouncing like fidgeting, and he'd, be, he'd always have a piece of rolled up tape like a cigarette in his mouth, and that was him. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I forgot about that. Go. And here we go. Yeah. What, what did he used to say? That'll happen. That, that, that'll, happen. <laughs> that'll happen. That was that was his favorite. That was going to say that was my that's my memory of him, like. When anything bad happened or, you know, shit hit the fan, you'd just hear him in the corner of the locker room just go, that'll happen. And then, you know, he would move on to the next thing and it would nothing would phase him, like you say. And he always seemed to be in the in the right place at the right time and come up with a big goal. His summer Before training, the only he, used to, he used to set up, his summer training, he used to set up uh, his exercise bike, but I think it was just more of a seat uh, on the end of his <laughs> like, jetty on his deck because he lived on the lake. And he and he, he used to put his fishing rod in one in one um, bottle <laughs> holder and a beer in the other, and he'd just sit there like slowly pedaling, like a summer yeah. ride fishing. <laughs> Do you remember? You remember he used to be addicted to Bailey's coffee. He used yeah. to drink Bailey's oh, yeah, coffee one... every day. He'd have one the, the, the day of a game, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. In the morning after pre-game skate, he'd always There's... have a Bailey's coffee. We tried it in Edinburgh the one game, actually. I think we'd, we ended up getting kicked out of the hotel room at like 11am. We didn't pay for late checkout, weird. 
and uh, <laughs> I went up down, down for about five hours, and Joe's smashed about three bailies, got played, had played, had played, had played, had played, had somewhere like that. Yeah, we'll get, yeah, get three more. We all scored, though, didn't we? Yeah, we Before the ownership change took uh, took place, um, your old mate was back in charge and really in charge. Finner had gone off to Cardiff to play. Reagan had obviously got to know Ryan and 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 brought him back. How tough was it for him to come back and then be a coach to you? Because he'd been right in the middle of what you'd been as players. He led the charge and now he was coming back to be the gaffer. In hindsight, Ryan probably admits he came to Sheffield too soon, but but what was it like for you guys to have your mate come back in and then be the boss? Jonah? I mean, for us, it was fine. It, it, you know, we didn't, we didn't view it any other way. I think, you know, the way our relationships were with previous coaches we I think we we had that respect of, of where where the line was so you know I think we were fully aware of that um, I'm not sure if he you know and as, as he's probably said already you know he, whether he was ready for that at that time um, I think he still wanted to play too didn't he he, was, he didn't know he didn't want to be that guy who overplay himself so I think you know it, it must be such a tough job especially in Sheffield to be a, a, a player coach um, but yeah it, it, I mean it was it was weird it was different but it, it was uh, you know another fun year we had Jason you two had so many similarities you and Ryan and <laughs> that must have been different for you yeah I think I think it was it was a little harder I think for me, like like you say, I think we were almost too similar at times and we butted heads quite a bit that year. Certainly when he was playing, I think that's the year that we spoke about. I think we did we go to a Continental Cup that year in Denmark? Yeah. And yeah. I think me and him yeah, we did. We almost, yeah. We almost had a fight on the bench, me and Finner over something. I think Jono was injured actually. Um mm. and sort of had to get between us. I think he threw a pass at my shin and then chirped me for not picking it up. So I try I was gonna attack him on the bench, but it was just, we just, when he was playing and coaching for me, it, I don't know. I don't think he could quite separate. I don't think either of us could quite figure out that friendship slash coach. I respected it, the hell out of him. Um, but I think we were both a, at that time, certainly were probably a little too fiery for to be in that situation so soon. It almost felt like we were rebuilding again, though, Mark. And, and it, <clears throat> three, again, were a massive part of that core trying to hold things together in what was a difficult year. It was the Colt King leaving right at the end of the playoffs year. It was uh Dowdy had come back as well from Belfast. It was it was it felt yeah. like there was pieces of the jigsaw but they weren't all connecting at that time. Right. Yeah, yeah. It was like a building year and, you know, each and every team sports team goes through that where, you know, for whatever reason things don't quite click and it can take a season to, to get back to where you want it to be. And it, it definitely for me it felt kind of a little bit like that that year. But also we knew that, you know, we still had that core of players and we still had that second group of good people around that, um, you know, we knew it would come good again. Um, I think, obviously, you know, talking to Finna, yeah, we did make a good music video that year. Um, <laughs> Dave, thank you for chirping that in. Um, uh, um, but no, yeah, I think Finna, you know, he openly admit, you know, it was he found it very difficult to probably separate himself from, from going out for a few beers with the boys and... Uh, you know, to be in the coach and sort of almost telling us not to do that. You know what I mean? Like as a coach, you've you've got to hold your players back. You don't want them doing things they shouldn't be doing, and you've got to hold them back and and keep them on the regime, I guess. And 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 I guess I think he probably we came did second. Fine. Yeah, we did. We, did we, we actually had we did a really good year, and then for whatever reason, it just had a kind of a bad feeling around it. You know what I mean? And uh, but yeah, well, you know, it soon. Yeah, it's just, it's one of those things, like you say, you look back in history, you can see it for a few years through Sheffield that, you know, that, that happens and there's like a rebuild almost and a reset button's hit and, and, you, and you go again. And it, and it reset then the next year as well, 12-13, Lim in, Michelle in, Gertson, Ferguson, Thomas Estito, your mate there, uh, Jason, um, Corey Pecker, God, he was a bit of a disappointment, wasn't he? Um We'd all built him up to be. We were told he was going to be the best thing that had ever set foot into the country, and he 
He looked like the Mitchley man when he arrived, uh, <laughs> Jenna. It's not like Sheffield to build someone up that big, is it? <laughs> yeah, Christ. <laughs> uh, you're, they're still doing it to you, John Boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough for every year, Mark. You're now on the oh, sixth hi. line. <laughs> Timsey rang the other day. He was like, is it honestly been 15 years? I was like, yeah, I guess so. I read it. I read that. It was, that was crazy. Yeah. It is. Sestito was a character, wasn't he, when he came in in the NHL strike? And Jay, I know you, you got on well with him. Yeah, he was. I think one thing you can say for him is an unbelievable guy, but not a, not a care in the world, I don't think. And just, I think it was, it was, you know, it was a holiday for him. And, you know, I think he realised that he probably wasn't doing himself any favours being here. So, but good guy. And I, I think he, he gave it what he had in games, but he wasn't in shape what he would have been if, if the NHL was starting and stuff like that. So I don't think we saw the true, the true Tommy. I'd, I'd have liked to see him, you know, kind of come in in shape and, and see what he could have done because he had good hands. He could, he could have put up good numbers and, and tough as hell. But I think I got him in about four fights from slashing someone. So he's probably like, yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm out of here. Going out. I'm, I'm not here for this. I'm on holiday. <laughs> if if Ryan Finnerty suffers with one thing and it, it, it's played his whole career, it's not getting to the playoffs. He's only ever got to the final four once with with Braid, and he's two years in charge. He was mightily unlucky at Ice Sheffield. We went out to Hull and then we went out to uh, to Coventry, and I guess it wasn't a massive surprise when when Tony called an end to his tenure, Jana. Yeah, no, it was you know obviously Tony was was new a new owner and so he was just kind of finding his feet and and you know reorganizing the club and trying to find his way and um yeah i, I you know i don't think i don't think finna was really surprised and obviously it, it was a, a shame because at the end of the day he was he was a good mate of all of ours but you know tony had to do what was what was best for the club and and you know i think tony had such a vision and especially you can see that now how how much has grown uh, and evolved um, and then uh, who did we get in after that? Was it was it Doug? Well, it was Doug, wasn't it? No, it was Doug yeah. to start. Doug to start off. With, yeah. <laughs> no, I've got to be honest. We, we, all, was, we, all, we all mock. Stuff. Yeah, we we all kind of mock now that 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 period of time. But like he'd had tremendous success. He'd done well in Edinburgh. He'd had tremendous success in um, in Belfast. And I must admit, when he first came across, I was kind of hey, you know, he's a proper coach, but. He was just not the right fit, was he? Uh, he? He just never worked for him from from day one, Jay. Well, I probably speak for the whole team. That was one of the least enjoyable sort of five months I, I've had in my whole career. Probably the most miserable five months I've ever had in my career. Um, I think at that time he, he treated us like kids, and and for us and and being there for so long and and having success and knowing how to win. Um, he was trying to reinvent the wheel with us and, and kind of taking away, it's certainly for me, I speak for myself, it's taking away why I was successful in what I did. Um, and was and real, like, really belittled you at times and it just didn't sit well with our group. Um, obviously, you'll get into it and, and going, but um, I was pretty happy that day. Yeah, no, no. I think most people were. Roddy Savage as well. He, he, his first decision was not to to bring Roddy back. And what an important part of the core he was. And he went on to be again later, Jonna. That he, he just didn't it didn't work out. But to lose a guy like Roddy was was hugely important. Comment on that first, but then go on to how important it was then for you guys to try and keep a hold of the room when it wasn't a happy camp. And again, the importance of the the three of you were to to trying to keep the club afloat if you like or the team the team afloat and what you had to do to do that i think on roddy i mean he was i mean such a huge player he, I mean, he was one of the best players in the league for you know his whole time he was here and um you know the decision not to bring him back it was it was obviously the wrong one um so you know i think as 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 a team we missed him and, and then as a mate we missed him um 
so that you know there was definitely a gap there with 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 him missing um and then i think you know when doug when doug left i i doug doug was a good coach it, it, i think as you said it just it just didn't it just didn't work what it, what he was trying to bring to Sheffield, it, you know, for one reason or another, um, it just didn't work. And it wasn't the most enjoyable. I think, you know, when, once, once he did kind of leave and, and G came, came in, I think that was one, one great thing that, that, you know, G had about him was, was he, he got, he got the fun back in us. And I think we were so, we were playing so robotic at that time. Uh, there were so many systems involved um we we almost didn't know how to play did we and 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 I, you know g used to say all the time you know I'm, I'm speaking to coaches and you're a you're an easy team to play against and you know i think within a few weeks i think g kind of knocked all that out out of us and and kind of instilled a bit of fun back into our game and you know obviously we ended the season like 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 we did yeah. One one player, when I was writing all the ins and outs in here, Steph Meyer, uh, Dowdy Back, Spencer, Fata, Cohn, and then I wrote the name Danny Myers. That was a strange time because Danny was all things Nottingham, wasn't he, for so long? And we all know Danny really well, but we'd, mi- we'd, we'd mimicked him for so long because of what he was trying to do with Nottingham. And then he got turfed out there. And he really did actually buy into being a stealer. He, he, I think he had a, he enjoyed his two years, and he, he was an integral part, Jay. Yeah, he was. He was obviously quite an outspoken guy, and um, it was weird. It, I can't say it wasn't weird, but it was kind of funny because he walked right in here, and be kind of like, "Hey, glad to be here. You won't be slashing me anymore, and you won't be trying to fight me every night." And I was kind of like, "Well, will we'll just wait till we have a beer?" But I think the best, going back to Doug, the best thing that Doug ever did, and Tom will agree with me, was take captaincy off John. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll, I will second, we, second that. We actually, I swear, I swear to God, he made us do a lot of quizzes and and all sorts of stuff, Doug. But we had a vote for who who the captain would be, and I'm I'm almost. 100% that the vote was in John's favour and I think no matter what happened he was taking that captaincy and Did you vote for I think it, who, John eh? but I think the rest <laughs> of the guys did um, but it, I think uh, it was just bullshit from the start like he'd say he was so disrespectful to the people that had been there Roddy I'd, you know I'd kind of forgotten about Roddy in that situation and it was just, and to take that from John after already having all those years and all ye- those years of success, and something he said was, um, you know, if I if I don't change some of you guys in the core group, if you like, then what am I really bringing to this team? Well, you know, it proved it it didn't work trying to rip us apart. So, well played. Yeah, and Mark Jared brought a freshness back in, and he brought a, a smile to our faces, and and it was it was a fun a fun run to the uh, to the final four, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you know, we'd been. I remember the one thing I remember about that season was I felt more tired and beat up by the time I got to the weekend than I did. You know, we we would spend hours. Me and Mizey especially would spend hours after practice blocking shots. Like, and I'm not just talking. A little wrist shot. I'm talking full on clappers from like the top of the circles, and me and Danny Myers would have to practice blocking shots all the way through practice. And then we get to the weekend, and I'm like, oh my god, we've got a game in three hours. Like, I feel like I need three days off. Um, but yeah, so when G came in, I, it was a bit of a weird time for me that because I'd hurt my back about three weeks before that, and um. I'd been told I had to keep keep playing, uh, and I think I remember I remember going uh, to, to I got told I had to come to the trip in Belfast, and and Ted's had been working on my back in in Belfast for about it must have been a good hour before the game, and I got off the bed and I was obviously butt naked. All I can remember was half the boys looking around like, "What the hell has he done to you?" I had a, I had a pretty much a love bite from the bottom of my shoulder blades all the way to the top of my hamstrings because he'd had this new tool on me and he'd been working away on it and it was yeah it was disgusting but i yeah i couldn't i couldn't i didn't play for about six weeks i think so when g came in obviously i was around helping out doing a lot of stuff off the ice but instantly you could see the change in in the players and uh you know the way that, that 
they were a lot happier around the rink. Even just coming to practice was uh, was fun again. And then um, after that, you know, it, it obviously it worked towards the end of the season, and uh, you know, got got the old playoff win. Yeah, talk John us through that, uh, John. Go on, John boy. <laughs> Go on, John boy. <laughs> that, that practice when you came back <laughs> and you got kicked off the ice, he kicked you off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I wasn't ready. And you weren't allowed to use your backhand. <laughs> I remember that. I remember getting kicked off practice. But I don't. Oh yeah, and then he said, t- "Oh yeah, he told me I wasn't allowed to use my backhand for the rest of the season." <laughs> oh, oh, brilliant! Oh, he just opened the door. And he's like, "Tomo, out. Get off. <laughs> you did, You're it. not ready yet. Get off." I just wanted to play. I just wanted to play in the playoffs. And literally, I just sat on the bench as a grocery stick for the whole of playoffs like this. Oh, God. Uh, the playoffs were, I mean, batting Coventry, 3-2 and 6-1 for 9-3. Uh, tight one with Brayhead, the ones that Ryan did make the final four, um, 3-2. And then Fatter's overtime winner, what a what a joy of emotion that was uh, to win. And what had started off such a horrible year, just finished it on, on such a high when Fat scored that goal. I'm just going to say the funny thing about that goal was just before that, Fats made the worst play ever. And I think turned the puck over. Frank had to bail us out. There was a breakaway and and we were like, Fats, what are you doing? I I think he was in fault for a goal too, wasn't he? In in the second year. There was a little stick in his face or something like that. And he was was down arguing with the referee. And and in between the blue and the red line, yeah. And I think Shed scored or something like that. So, like Fats, what are you doing? And then, but then it, you know he comes up, he comes up huge. Yeah, I remember the, my favourite memory of that was when Fats scored and he, uh, someone had, had put. Obviously, this is when social media was starting to come in, and there was that picture of him throwing his gloves off, and he's like this in the air, and all you hear is that when you hear the, hear the sound of the ice cream van or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's like this. It's the best thing ever. Oh. I, I tell you what I remember about the celebrations. I was lucky enough to be down on the ice doing the interviews. I've never seen a man as happy in my life as Phil Hill was. He'd won. And yeah. we haven't talked a lot about him. He was such an important part. He had a couple of little spells. He was such a top bloke. And I honestly can't remember a man smiling as much and being as happy. And he's been a mate of yours for forever, hasn't he, John? Yeah, and he was – I mean – as professionals go, I don't think you, they get more professional than, than than Phil. He does, you know, everything that you need to do to to play at the top level and in anything. Um, he, he's the same off off the ice with his with his work and his and you know all the degrees and PhDs and whatever else he's doing. Um, but he's been so close to to you know winning winning the playoffs and. and you know, I, I don't know how many finals they'd they'd lost out in, and um, you know, obviously getting released from Cardiff that uh, earlier that year. Um, and I, I mean, for for me and him, when we were kids, you know, we used to go to Wembley and 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 watch watch the playoffs. So the playoffs were a big deal to us. It was it was something that that we could remember as a kid, and you know, what you dream of, of being able to do um, in the future. So you know, for him. For, for him to win that that first one was 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 brilliant for, uh, to see for him. So on the back of that uh, playoff success, G then uh, rebuilds, and uh, boy did he ever rebuild! Um, big overhaul. Um, Wa, Forney, Freta, Marcienko, Eddie, and he brought Roddy back, which I thought was was massive. Um, Frank Doyle stayed, and it was it was to be your last year, Mark. But what a last year! Uh, it, it proved to be, and what an impact those guys made on the team. Yeah, obviously, I think you know straight away from from the first practice, you had a feeling of uh, of what what could be. You know, given for me, it was a bit of a more of a special year as well, with with it being my testimonial year, and you know, I wanted to win everything that year, or like I did every year, but it was just would have made it even more special to win it all. And Obviously, starting out, you don't know how it's going to end up, but um, you just hope that the guys that are coming in, um, you know, buy in. And, um, you know, I think pretty much within the first couple of weeks, we were all, you know, the, like you say, the core had, 
got to the new guys and and they were all on board and you just you got that feeling that good things were going to happen from from the outlet. Jana, when when a big change happens, and I'll take you back to that year when Wazi and Forney and Fred and Muzzy walk in. How, how do you go about integrating them into the group? How, how do they get welcomed, if you like, into this core? And if you like, get taught the Sheffield way? Is it is it a beer or is it is are the words that you 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 can say to these people to to tell them what the Sheffield way is? I mean, we always try and meet up the first, you know, the first kind of days that they're in for some beers. I think that's that's always the easiest way to do things. But I mean, we, you know, when we do these things, we we don't sit there and and sit them down and tell them this is the way, you know, the way things are and how it's got to be. And we we just try and be normal and well, as normal as we can be. Um, but I mean, just little things like you know, I, I think Walsey and, and uh, Morenci were, were speaking French in the room, so straight away Huey had start, you know, pretend speaking French, and and then someone else had shout out English. Um, it's just little things like that. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, that was and, and, and but, okay. Uh, that's that's the way things are, and um, but I think again it. it all those guys you mentioned, they, they were, they, from day one, they just bought into the way things were here. And, and you know, they knew that they'd, they'd come to a team where we'd all been for a long time and, and they respected that. Did you get the impression early on, Jason, that it was going to be a special year that you, when you saw, you know, the that G brought in? Yeah, I think, <clears throat> I certainly think that was the closest where out of all the changes that were made that it ever came to being like that that Mon Talbot era when you got people like Wazi and Eddie, um, you know, uh, Forney, people like that. It was just, it seemed so natural and coming in and how good Fretz was was just, it was ridiculous when he first got in. I remember I felt like someone had put my skates on the other feet when he went round me. It was just, it, it was a joke how good he was. So I think right away you, you knew we had we had a good team and, and G was, you know, he'd, he'd settled then and and really put his stamp on that team and practices were intense. It, it was just the whole feel was back of, we, we can do something special again now. You just mentioned Colin Eddy and uh, his name will live on forever with the Eddy, but it was you two that, that basically are responsible for the Eddy. Just talk us through that exhibition game, I Sheffield, Cullen happens to win the man of the match on the very first game of the year, and you all come over to him. Take it away, Mark. Yeah, he was. He was. He came in. He had that kind of lively, you know, uh, spur. He was always like joking and stuff like that, and he was kind of a dumb American. We called him a little bit, and uh, me and Huey sort of took an opportunity to. Uh, he kept saying, "You know, what's this man of the match? What is this man of the match all about?" And you know, anyway, he ended up winning it first first game, and uh, he's like, "What do I do? What do I do?" And I mean, you just go up, get your beers, and then you have to do like you have to go round and do a big hot lap or as fast as you can all the way around the outside of the ring. He's like, really? And I was like, yeah, yeah, go and ask Huey. So <laughs> he shoots off to Huey. Huey backs off exactly what we've both been preaching to him, and you know he uh, he set off on this this hot lap and long way you know long way to continue. It's lived on ever since, I think, hasn't it? And now we've got Jonna doing stupid dabs and stuff like that. So <laughs> I can remember. I can remember walking into the Ice Sheffield dressing room after Ed's had done that, and I walked straight over to Jono, and he knew exactly what I was going to say, and he was just shaking yeah. his head because he knew Tony had loved it, and the fans had loved it, and yeah. he knew that was staying, and it was just, oh, I can't believe he's done it, that. No, it's your you, worst nightmare. Think, no, you called me because I, I, my appendix went in there the, the night before, so I was, uh, I was in hospital, so you would called, and we're like, oh, oh. Tom and Hugh have done this. There's this new thing we're, we're going to do. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Great. Marvellous. I think, uh, I think, you know, knowing knowing Eddie now, I think if he'd have done that on his own, it had just been typical Eddie and, yeah. and it had just stuck. He was just... What, An easy what target. A guy to be, what a guy to be around. Like, he was so energetic. Yeah. Um, and what a compare. Like, he'd fight anybody. 
he scared me in practice once. He came after me and, and attacked me. I was like, oh, no, I'm dead. But he was so, <laughs> so good to be around. Like, he was a nerd, but he was cool. It was just weird. Yeah. Honestly, what? one of the funniest Warren. things... One of the funniest things is, is like, with all the videos that, that have been put up, you know, during during lockdown. Any game back then, just just watch the highlights and watch Eddie. He he was nuts, man. Like anyone came, they weren't even close to the net, and it, it was just all out abuse. He was he was a bully. <laughs> he was an absolute <laughs> bully. He was so strong. It was just a joke. He just come in. <laughs> he was. Wazi and, and Forty scored just hundreds of goals and, and were terrific. But, Jonna, how good was, was Colton Fred? So Jason just, just touched on him. Um, and, and how different was he as a bloke? Because he was an acquired taste. He was quiet, but he was the funniest of guys. And, uh, and I, I must admit, I, he was one of my favourites. I, I loved him to bits. But he was a super, super character on and off the ice. Yeah, he was. He was. I mean, on the ice, he was. He was always that kind of special player that that you know they they might only come along every every you know three or four years. You, you, you're not always lucky to have one on on your team. And he was he was one of them players. He he could he could turn a game when he wanted to. It is you know the leagues he played in the, his skill set. Um, and then off the, off the ice, probably one of the most complex characters that you'll ever come across. You know, quiet, but funny, dry, sarcastic. Um, but you know, turned out to be you know just just a great friend over over the last few years. Yeah, it was also Mark. It would end up a great year, obviously winning a, a championship, and we'll we'll go on to that in a second. But it was such a weird and a sad year because it was the it was the Amy Usher year. And you three guys were very instrumental in in bringing her and her family into the group, and 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 they became just a, an integral part of the of the crew, didn't they? Towards the end, yeah. Obviously, I think uh, obviously she got introduced to us in the changing room when we at first we had no idea what she was going through, um, you know. And obviously, as time went on a little bit, we learned learned the story, and and obviously she became close to the team and. I think uh, it's given me kind of goosebumps even thinking about it now, if I'm honest with you. But, um, you know, it's, yeah, she was, yeah, I, I honestly don't really know how to talk about this, if I'm honest with you, and especially with everything yeah. I've gone through. It's, it's uh, yeah, it, it kind of gets to me and stuff. But, um, yeah, I don't know. She, she she definitely brought something out of us in the team that in, and in that changing room that we knew, you know, we knew we had something special inside the locker room, but we had to go out and, 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 and try and prove it that year and make sure we won something for, for her. And, uh, you know, obviously the, the sad news at, towards the end of the year. Um, mm-hmm. um, but, you know, I think it was the I think it was the Friday or I think you were doing the walk at the time. And um, I remember me and Benny um, came out to meet you um, on, a, on a Sunday morning. I think it was before we played Cardiff, right? And, um, yeah. Yeah, and I remember walking up to you, and then you literally just—that was the first thing out of your mouth that she'd passed away. And yeah, it was yeah. Obviously, we walked for you for a good mile after that, but you know, and then obviously it led to the whole thing of um, you know that that game and the, the two-one game, and you know the twelve and, and twenty-one and all that kind of stuff. And it was you know it all it all linked back to to, to sign to Amy. What was weird, Jana, was that obviously as a club we brought her in and, and did the things, but then one day I, there's a picture appears and all you guys had taken her and her sister out for dinner and it was like not arranged through the club. It was just that you'd, you'd, you'd done it. She had that kind of magnetism about her, didn't she, that that you wanted to do things for her and and you did and then all the wives did and they brought her in and and then I can remember her being at the player finals and she was a poorly girl then and her running down the stairs to be in the dressing room when you all, all got there and then being on the ice afterwards. You you made her feel inclusive to the team. Yeah, I think I, I think to be honest, she she she's just become a friend of all of ours and, and as as you said, you know, it, it wasn't just us us, it was it it was the wives as well and um you know, they were just a, they were just good people, a great family, and and you know, they still come down now, and 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 you know, we all stay in touch and say hello, and um, you know, Beth, I think Beth came out with us after after we won the league and things like that, and um, but yeah, they they just you know really did become good friends of ours, and 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 you know, they they bought into into us as much as we bought in 
into them kind of thing. Jason, that 2-1 game against uh, Cardiff, Teddy Bear Toss, I remember. And we were 1-0 down, Leggy, no, not Leggy, um, I forget who he was who scored the uh, the first Dowdy. goal. But then the te- Dowdy. And then the Teddy Bears come and took all the momentum away. And then I think it was Phil Hill who made a great play to to, to Leggy for the winner. And the emotion of, of that night, what are your memories of that 2-1 game? No, it... That was one of the best games, um, certainly I was a part of. It was, <clears throat> and what's quite fitting is, I know you put the clip of that on the other day and um, Leggy scored, but I bet you won't see an import and four British guys on the ice too often anymore. I think Tomo was out there, Benny, myself and Hilly. I think Leggy was with me and Hilly at the time, which who'd have mm. thought that, but him, com- him coming back and scoring that goal and doing that famous kind of, running on skates kind of thing that he did um, was so fitting for him, for him to have that um, that moment and and to be on the ice for that was unbelievable but I think there was about 14 minutes left in the game that, yeah. and Cardiff, Cardiff were good at that time um, they, they had some great players and it, it was intense and um, I know right with about 3-4 seconds to go they had a chance right around our net and we were all kind of already climbing the board. So it was just mm. from from the start to the end, it was just um, edgy, you see. And I think that's the year they did they beat us in the Challenge Cup. They did. I was just going to say, Mark, <laughs> you, could, you could have gone out on the ultimate eye, couldn't you? Because it was a, the Challenge Cup and the playoffs just didn't quite go to, to plan. It was so close to being a treble. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it was really close, but... You know, it's sport and sometimes it goes different. You know, it just falls one way or the other. And, uh, you know, I, for me personally, I remember that game. I remember vividly skating up the ice because it was a play in our end. And um, and uh, we skated up the ice and I was, well, Benny was, I don't know, a couple of feet in front of me on the left-hand side. And I remember shouting over to him saying, we're going to score in a minute. And he was, he looked back at me. He was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, we're going to score. And I don't know what it was. I just had this feeling. And then obviously... Think he got put into the corner and Hilly went to the half boards, fired it at the net, hit uh, the goalie made a save and it bounced out to Leggy and he put the rebound in and he he literally couldn't believe what I'd just told him because I don't know why I just said it. I had a I just had this feeling that we were going to score. I knew Leggy was going to be in the right place at the right time and and uh, yeah and it, it obviously we managed to hold on for those forty minutes. Those were probably that and I remember like Huey said those there was about forty minutes left. Those are probably the longest forty minutes in a game I have ever played because of everything that I personally had going on with my testimonial and then the whole thing in, in Sheffield with Amy and, and, and that whole emotion and stuff like that. It was, uh, yeah, and that, that feeling of, of the final hooter going and, uh, and obviously it's jumping onto the ice. And, yeah, it was something I'll never, ever forget. And, uh, you know, I, I can remember it like it was yesterday. The three of you have, have had testimonials because of the longevity and the incredible service that you've you've given. Mark, you you were first. It's it's a great it's the greatest honour, I guess, other than the shirt in the in the rafters. But it's a it's a monumental honour to be to be awarded one of those. And and you were the first of, of of the three of you. And by God, did the fans ever get behind you and appreciated that support uh, all the way through the year at all the events, your game, everything. It, it was it was, and then yeah. the, the testimonials. It was a terrific night. Yeah, it was obviously, you know, the, the game is, is, is only just a small part of it. Um, you know, the committee worked tremendously hard all year and, uh, and Vic did loads of work behind the scenes as well. And, um, you know, we did we did plenty of things. I think if the boys remember, we, I took, we went out paintballing at the start of the year, which was a good team bonding thing. Um, and then we did a few other things, you know, throughout the season with a question of hockey, I think it was, where Huey ended up beating me, I think, and, in his team or whatever it was, and and you know we did lots of things. Obviously, the roast w- was pretty good. Um, well, I think we all well we all did roast apart from Huey because Huey bottled it, and and then ended up just roasting everybody no, else he, after everybody had, had he, said good things. He, about he it. did when he just didn't tell us. Yeah, yeah. yeah was all... <laughs> I know yeah, one yeah, of the I'm most sure. important things. Which which was the roast? I think it was your roast, and it was when G. And Leggy got back together again because Leggy at the question of hockey was the mystery sports personality, wasn't he? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, because and yeah, then we and, and G was there, and then it was then they went off doing whatever they went yeah. off to do, and um, that was when he. I, I remember G phoning me the night after saying, 
leg he's coming back because he he gone off his sabbatical at the Steel Dogs for a month or two yeah, before yeah. that. So we're, an, important, we're, an important an important night on many ways. Yeah, we'll probably have some video footage of that if uh, Mr. Burnham had turned up for the night. I could asked him to, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, oh. I know, I know. <laughs> well, yeah, no, it was uh, yeah, it was one of those things. But yeah, it was yeah, you know, it was bringing Leggy <clears throat> back was. It was something that probably the team might have, just that little edge that we needed, and, and it obviously paid off in the long run. I found a photograph, Jason, the other day. I'll post it tomorrow. It was the day that uh, Leggy walked back into the dressing room, and it's you and him with your arms around each other. You welcome him back. It's a, it's a brilliant photograph. Um, I'll turn to Jono and, and Jason. Mark then leaves the team. You two just tell me, and I know your rib and your 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 great mates. But what did Mark bring, and and what was missed when when he left? Because it he was an massively important part of your trio, but also of the club as a whole. Jason. Yeah, he was um, obviously he's right there. It's kind of it's kind of soft, but he's a he's a massive part of my life. Um, obviously, when I you know I'd not been playing hockey long when I met him. Um, we'd gone from that. To see to from junior hockey to senior hockey to the elite league together, um, and other than those games, like you mentioned before, when we were apart, and uh, it was yeah. So when it went up to answer your question, when I walked in the room, and I was sat in the same spot I had been for a long time, and and Tom was always in the corner, <laughs> naked with his pasty skin, and um, it was just <laughs> real weird. It's to not have him there with me. Um, I think the only the only sort of saving grace in that is that because the rest of us were so close, and not to say that we'd forgotten about Tomo because you know he could never never ever forget what he did and and how close we are, but it was it was certainly easier because we'd had a a solid um, I know we keep saying it, but a solid core that had, that had been together so long it made it an easier transition certainly for us. Um, I'm sure it was hard for Tomo and. Um, you know, I know he played hockey the year after, but it wouldn't have been the same. And um, but just it's so strange for someone to be there so long, and then all of a sudden they're not there. It does it does hit quite hard. But obviously you're there to do a job still, so you just have to to kind of carry on. But very strange. Jonna, your your thoughts on forty four? Yeah, I think they, you know, everything what Huey has said, and you know, as I said before, like we all. We all kind of went through our journeys of life together, uh, you know, in that, you know, which is, it was a long time, but really in the grand scheme of things, it was such a short time, um, you know, short part of our lives. But, you know, we all kind of, I'd say, <laughs> the majority of our growing up, we, we, we had a, we had our, our, our fun nights out. And then, you know, we all kind of got married around the same time. We all had kids around the same time. Um, so, you know, I, I think we really were, we really were more more brothers than 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 teammates. What did you miss most, Mark, that first year when you were out of it? I know you were in Manchester Everything. and you were playing yeah. extent, but what what were the big things you missed? Every single bit of it. This is not you know. Um, I don't know. Uh, do I regret the decision? I don't know. It's you know maybe I should have retired. Not that you know Manchester had problems that year. I'm not going to sit here and lie, but you know I. Yeah, um, I missed everything, you know, just being around the boys, talking to them in the summer didn't feel the same because they were training for some, they were going to Champions League, um, you know, um, just everything really. And then obviously it's hard to like, um, to talk to them knowing that they're on like a different path, if you like, and, and you're on another route. And obviously I'd started, I'd made the decision to go into like work life. And uh, so hockey was more of a part-time thing that year. Um, and I was getting into the family business, which I was finding difficult um you know but you know um and and obviously they 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 were having success that year as well so that made it even more harder there was there was one point at that year i think maybe around november i think you called me and there was a chance of maybe coming back and um you know i definitely thought about it but um obviously it just didn't quite work out the way that i wanted it maybe and and and, and tomo you know i spoke to tomo a little bit about it but you know it was yeah, it was tough to see the boys, you know, moving on and stuff like that. But I was also, you know, hoping for the best for them and uh, hoping that they won things and carried on to win things. And obviously they did that. And, and John is still there today doing that. And, uh, you know, it's going to be, 
you know, it is, is it's going to be a while before Sheffield sees, you know, guys like Huey and John are, you know, who are going to be around for the next 10 years. That is the big question mark, isn't it? Who's, who are the, who are the guys that are going to take over from, from John when, when he goes and he can't push that out to other people. We haven't got to worry about that for another six or seven years though yet. We'll, uh, he'll keep on going for a bit. Yeah. Um, three became, three became Rocky two. John. Well, Rocky John. <laughs> <laughs> This is the last Make season we're going to talk about. <laughs> you know it can happen. Um, <laughs> this is the last season we're going to talk about. I mean, three became two. Jason, you're last year. Um, obviously, Tomo comes in for G. Um, changes. Some characters go out, the likes of, of Forney, uh, Baldwin Cone. But Levi comes in, Fitzy, Desi, Vesper, Coyle. Um, another big turnaround. And again, hugely important how how you adjust to 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 another coach and, and another year, Jana. Yeah, and you know, again, like some some great signings being made, and 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 guys straight away again who who, who bought straight into our to the Sheffield way. It, it was, um, I think, I think the game had really started to change. That you know, the, those years, you know, that, that first year when Wazi and Fretz and Fawns kind of came in, um, seemed to be you know the start of the change, and then and then that year after it it almost lifted again. It, it was it was getting better and better by bigger margins, um, and it, it was it was it, it was a fun time. It was it was good hockey. You needed you know you needed more you know you needed that structure within the team, um, needed the X's and O's, and you needed to have fun. And and you know we were still having fun then. It, it was. Uh, you know, not as I think things were getting a bit more professional. I think Danny, Danny had come had come on board at that point. I think. I mean, it sounds like a broken record, but it, it, every single year is is it, you know they 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 great times and it, it, you're so lucky to do to do this for a job. It, it's 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 tough to find many negatives in in any year. To be fair. And Jason, you were still an integral part of that dressing room of that team in your final year. Um, obviously, we had a different testimonial event almost every week when it was in your year. Um, but 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 big characters, and you, and you were still one of the big characters in 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 that room leading leading the charge. Yeah, and no, I was still still loving life, and obviously a testimonial. I didn't really. I was lucky because Stace just took the, the bull by the horns with it all and and sort of ran with it. And for me, it was always easy to sort of socialise with people and stuff anyway. So the events just kind of, they just rolled like like usual and all the boys bought in, which was huge. Um, and yeah, it was, uh, it was a fun, yeah, it was a, it was a tough one. Um, I don't think I played as much towards the end of that year as I'd have, I'd have probably liked. So it was quite. Jesus, John. Say the test. What did he do? I'll be. I'll be slamming those at mini mini John eleven at night. <laughs> I don't even know what you my know, kids I... are doing. <laughs> I'm hoping mine are asleep, but um, yeah, but yeah, I um. I didn't play as much as I wanted to at the end of the season, but that's just sort of the way the way things go certain years. But all the same, it was a great great group of guys, like you say, with Desi and Fitzy and um, Fretz was still there. Eddie, it was it was just a, another great group of guys and honest guys that that sort of just again bought in. It and like John said, it sounds like a broken record, but it just we was. I don't think we'll ever truly realise um, for a long time is how lucky we were. And recruitment is so lucky as well because, you know, somebody could tell you anything about someone and, and it, they might get there and be complete opposite. But we were so lucky to have great people and, and great wives even. Like everybody who was there, it was just, it was like the same people with different names. And it just, yeah. it was so refreshing. And I think now... For me, obviously, it ended it ended strange, a bit different to Tomo because I'd had a, a a job offer, obviously, sort of in hockey but outside of hockey, and with the way things were going at that time, with how much I was playing and and knowing that the import rule was going up again the year after, 
it kind of made my decision for me. Um, definitely the hardest decision I've I've had to make in my life. I, you know, I, I went I went actually I went to the interview in Manchester and then I went to my mum and dad's and I, I I knew the answer, but I just needed some some sort of backup on it and I had a cry and it was hard to to kind of say goodbye to it all because it was it, it was my life. It was we were kids when we got here and. Like, you know, we grew up together and we be, we became big kids, <laughs> basically. Yeah. But I want um, I want to come back. I want to come back to your last night in Sheffield. But before before that, um, Jason, John, the the characters there. Just uh, people will want to hear your views on Levi Fitzy Desi. I, I mean, Vesberg was an incredible character as well. In a in a in a quiet way, there was some there were there were some new heroes, wasn't there? Yeah, there was, and I mean. Vesberg was, you know, what a player he was and, and just did all the right things. And I mean, he was so quiet whenever we'd have a team night out or anything like that. He'd, he'd, he'd always, he'd always say he was ill or something, but he was, I think he was, he was at home playing poker or something like that. Wasn't he? he was in, he was in some, some yeah. tournament that he'd be playing. Um, you know, Levi, like what a, what a player he, he was for the Steelers. What a guy. Um, I don't think I don't think I've ever played with such a a bigger warrior in all my life. Um, the beatings he took, the beatings he gave on himself and 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 his body, and did it consistently every single night. You know his whole career it, and and produced the way he produced and how clutch he was. Just you know, I think we were so lucky to have him. Yeah, yeah. Just going back, Jason. That last night, it was Leggy's last night as well, wasn't it? Um, at the arena, and I think the fans that night showed the pair of you just you know how much they had appreciated everything that they'd given, and in, and seeing the two of you, it was quite a sad, almost an end of an era that that yourself and Leggy were were skating around, and you got the kids with you, and uh, the last night playing in that building, what what was that like for you? It was it was just kind of bittersweet, wasn't it? Because we'd been knocked out of the playoffs the same night. I mean, I. How good would it have been to end in Nottingham at, at the playoffs? But um, you know, it wasn't to be. So that was that was hard to accept a little bit. Um, and as Tomo said, I think my wobble kind of came in. I'd say June, Julyish, because I think you were going back quite early in August, mm. um, and obviously still speaking to John a lot. And um, it was hard to walk away from and like you say being on the ice and so many people sticking around after we've just been knocked out of the playoffs to sort of say goodbye to myself and leggy was just um massively emotional and okay then just mark jonna we'll start with you mark just then your words on on what jason brought during his his, his tenure um and 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 how a special a character he was uh, for us during that period of time. Yeah, obviously, you know, he brought something every night to to the table in the games, and and obviously, I've been ever since I started playing ice hockey. Huey's always been in the same changing room as me. From day one, I walked into Altringham Ice Rink at about seventeen, I think I was, and and Huey was in there eating strawberry laces to to the to my last game in 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 Nottingham uh, when I sat next to him and. Yeah, it, we were on the long end of a result that night, but you know, there's so many great memories. He brings so much to the team that you know sometimes he grinds on people, but he is, you know, I've never, I don't think I've met anyone who is more about the team than than himself. He is, uh, you know, he was when he was in Sheffield, he was 100% committed to the cause. He he gave, he put his body on the line every night, and uh, he made sure that. You know, when we had a good time doing things as well, he was always the, the life and soul of, of the changing room and the bar and wherever it was we went and and did or whatever we did as a team. And uh, you know, I can't talk highly enough about him and and how he helped me as uh, you know, especially with the last few years that I've been through. And um, you know, he's been there making sure he's ringing me and texting me and stuff like that. And that just goes to show the type of you know we don't see each other every day anymore. We're busy with work and stuff, but you know, it goes to show that. The friendship that we've had throughout the years, and and uh, and and the bond that we've got, um, you know, that will never be broken, as far as I'm concerned. John, the fans, I think, just realised that Jason cared 
as much as they did. And that's what they saw night in, night out. Somebody who, who was just laying it on the line every night. What what what, what were your compliments of, of 17 B? I think that I think I think Huey is 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 just pure honesty. And um, you know, what you see is what you get and, and he's gonna give you every you know, everything what's in him. Uh, whatever it takes to win, he'll do. Um, I think he'd do anything for anybody. He, he, you know, he really would. He'd, um, he, he'll give you a headache every single day. You don't shut up. Um, but he, he's, he, he was, you know, he, he, he was the life and soul. He was the heartbeat. You know, when, when, when things were down, he was, he was able to, to turn a room um, into laughter or, you know, into seriousness. I wouldn't say that he always knew when to, to turn that off, but he was he, he, he knew how to lift everybody's spirits and, and, and get everybody kind of, you know, patrol everyone and, and uh, into getting back on track. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, for what he did on the ice, it, it, you know, it, it, he was, it shows you what he's doing now. Like he, he's, he's, he's gone to Hull and, and he scores all these goals and, He's a he's a playmaker now, but that was that was all always in him. He, he just for his role with the Steelers, he did whatever was asked of him. Um, and you know, I, there's not many people who, who would who would sacrifice the kind of you know what they what they think or can do for the betterment of uh, the team. Jason, Mark, you two left. The other fellas still here, and and seems to be going from strength to strength. Firstly, your thoughts on him as a bloke and as a captain, but also your admiration of, since you've left, how he has continued to lead this whole organisation forward and what an, what an integral cog in the Steelers' history he has become. Mark, you first. Yeah, you know, what What more can you say about John? He's the ultimate professional. There's not one guy that has, has worked harder than him. On the team, on any team I was on whilst we, whilst we were there, and uh, and I'm pretty certain that stands stands today with with other teams that he's been on whilst I've not been there and Huey's not been there. Um, you know, he you can tell by the way he turns up in the summer. You know, at the start of camp that he's he's pretty much not stopped working out all summer. Um, and you know, we're looking away from that. You know, he's a He's a great person, a great friend. He um, he leads the team in in the in the right way, I think. And um, you know, he's he's also the right man to to lead the Steelers. Um, you know, for me, he's the best captain that has ever been for Sheffield. Um, and I don't think anyone will ever get where he has been. Um, you know, he's he's been the longest serving player. Nobody's like you said before. He's no one else is going to play the amount of games that he's played. Um, you know, I can't talk highly enough about him his family you know Kirsty and the kids and and you know his, his mum and and uh and Kirsty's family you know they're all just great people to be around and um you know it's yeah he's 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 living his dream out and uh, and long may it continue for, for you know for five five more years I think John I reckons he's got in him 10 10 yeah you're going for the you're going for the double the double testimonial yeah, yeah. he would he would <laughs> Yeah, he's just yeah. thinking about that. That's what it is. <laughs> Jason, what, when you know, when what are your what are your memories of Jono as a, as a player, a captain, and as a mate? What he brings to a team and the commitment that he shows, I don't think I've ever seen it in in life in general. Never mind to a sport that's so hard and demanding. He's so committed to the cause and things that people don't see. I think. That that's one of the things is his commitment away from the rink is 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 so high in what he what he eats what he eats and breathes is is just a professional um and and that's that's not easy and he's been doing it for so long it's just that's one thing I certainly don't miss is trying to eat right and he's just managed to do it for so long um and as a person I mean certainly for me we. We've obviously been through a lot together, and um, we're so close. But I'm, I'm very, I feel very, very lucky to to call him a close friend, and he's always there, been there when I needed him. Um, he's there for everyone. Um, you know, it, 
you can, you can't speak highly enough of him, and I don't think that Sheffield truly realise what they have in in Jonah until he's gone, and to see how successful he's been these last couple of years certainly. He's gone from strength to strength, and I think the hockey now suits him more than it did um, a few years ago. So, and I know last year at the beginning, um, I don't think he was given a fair fair shot, and but when he was, he he didn't have to take it, and you know we we all follow it closely, and I hope he's given that same shot next year because I just I just don't see a Steelers team without him, and uh, mm-hmm. I think Darren should be. Probably feels that same way now. He's now he's had a year with Jonna, and um, yeah, I, can, I honestly can't say enough about him. Um, everybody knows it. Um, we just we just back it up, and we're very lucky to to have had him and and call him such a close friend. Yeah, I think we're all very lucky, aren't we? That we've 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 been around in this era, and it's been it's been it's been for me. It's been brilliant to to see all of you and to to see how the the club has gone. At the very top, and this will be the uh, we'll we'll draw a line end of it. Then, Mark, I think six hundred and fifteen games. All three of you have once held the record of the most appearances, and and the, you're three out of towners. You know, um, you're not Sheffield born and bred, but you became Sheffield people, and John still is. What what did Sheffield and what did the Steelers become to mean to you, and and what does the club mean to you? Um, go on, Mark. We'll start with you. No, it became my life. Um, you know, we we moved there when we first started the uh, the journey in Sheffield, and and obviously, like Jonna said, we 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 came as boys and and, and left as as grown ups, if you like. And um, yeah, it meant absolutely everything to me to play for that for that club. Um, you know, it's by far for me the best club in the country. Um, the way it's run, um, you know, and and it's given me everything and and, and a great great memories from you know to, to look back on and, and talk to my kids about um and, and and obviously i've got i've got to share that with uh you know two of my best mates who who you know who are both living in sheffield still i live over in manchester now Huey works in manchester but you know we're still all around and and um you know this is a club that's so close to the fans and also so close to the players and the way they they interact with the fans and i think obviously John, uh, you know, is is the main the main man who's led all that over the years, and and long that, you know, I hope that continues for as long as possible. But yeah, it's meant the world to me. Obviously, um, my kids were born there. They they uh, they love Sheffield. They always look asking me when we can go back and and and, and go and see the game and stuff like that. So um, yeah, it's something that hopefully once this this uh, coronavirus gets lost, we can uh, get back over there and uh, and see a couple of games. Yeah, uh, Jason, you took over from from Mark as the longest serving player. You went six hundred and eighty two games, and I know you you really did. I know we use it as a hashtag, bleed orange, but you really did bleed orange. The Steelers meant the world to you as well. What's what's strange is that we didn't mention before me and Tom. After that that first half year, we did come in. We were kind of like it was such a gong show. We we were like driving home. We were like never again are we doing this. But then I think. There was just something that that clicked with us in Sheffield, and um, there was no way we could ever turn turn away from that. And you know, it, it's home for me. It feels more home than than Manchester ever did. Um, the going down to the rink, you know, obviously in my job, I get to to go and see the boys now and again. It's it's such a pleasure. It feels like, um, you know, it is an honour being able to to walk in there most times kind of when, when I want and and to see the boys and, and to see Gianna still still doing it so nice. Um, but it, it, it means the world to me. It, it gave me a lot. Um, you know, we're not, we're not rich, but what it gave me in, in life with friends and my family, basically. I met my wife here, I've had my kids here. It's just, yeah, I'll forever be grateful for the opportunity here and um, the Steelers. I'll, I'll always be a Steeler as far as I'm concerned. Obviously, I still have a job with Hull, and I'm I'm really enjoying that. Um, but but Sheffield is where I made my name and and became a man basically. So um, it'll, I'll forever be grateful, and and I hope that you know people are grateful for what I did too. Oh, they certainly are, Jonathan. They 
they still reveal you that you're, you're still the main man for them. Your, 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 your popularity, your respect levels grow. And you're one of the few people that's probably respected in every one of the 10 rinks, which is something that's perhaps not unique with, with, with other players. But I, I know from speaking to you almost daily, the, the Steelers mean the world to you as much as the club, as, as much as you mean to them. Yeah, I think as the boy said, you know, this is this is our home now. It's been our home for, you know, since the that first season we came here, you know, fifteen years ago. Um, but I think I think for me, playing in Sheffield is 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 given given me everything. Is 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 given me confidence in in hockey. Is given me confidence in in life. How to taught me how to how to grow. How to be a man. Uh, how to be responsible. Um, I, you know, when I when I do hang hang the skates up, there's 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 so many things that that you know life lessons that I can take away from Sheffield and and know I'm I'm a better person for for being here and 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 playing playing for this club. Um, is you know is is as cheesy as it sounds, it it is is it's been a dream and 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 um, you know. Just how lucky we all have been, just to just to been a part of this for for so long, and um, you know, it really was a, a, a journey and a time a, a time of our life. Okay, we're all getting a little sentimental here. Huey, Mark, give us a story, finish us off, give us a, a good moment, a good a good memory. Yeah, one I'll, that I'll you. Like you... One. I was going to talk about Go it on. before, but well, so there was one. Uh, when Danger was around and um, he'd come in and he was finding it difficult to, to, to settle in. Um, anyway, he'd started rubbing up. I think he rubbed John up the wrong a little bit. And um, so one day John said, I'm going to cut the end off his sock. So he cut the end of his sock off after practice and then quickly ran back over to the side of our, our room. And, and uh, he'd been in, he'd come out of the shower and he started putting his socks on. And then there was like the one sock, at the end was just cut right off. <laughs> Anyway, this continued. So, like, one day he cut one sock, and then the following day he cut both socks, and the other day he cut the other sock, and I he just keep rotating the way he was cutting them. They went on for about a week until danger finally like blew up, and up until about I think he visited in uh, February, he came over to see me, and uh, it was up until that point uh, this year he did he never knew that John had John had been cutting his sock. <laughs> Hang on, was it? I don't think it was me, was it? Or if I forgot? Yeah, it was you. It was me, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was you. That's, hey, that it was, that goes to show you how much it I remember was, that story. <laughs> yeah, it was. I think I started it, and then it cost me though because following on from that story, we went to um, was it Sutton? We had to play yeah, like that uh, was me. I don't know why we were there. Um, I don't know why I'm we were there. Tape. I'm getting the tape one mixed up. Yeah, that yeah, was that was so, me and Shep. Yeah, so we were going out after, so we're trying to get out of this game in Sutton and guys are just leaving. So we end up on this minibus pickled and we stopped by the <laughs> side of the parkway for a, to go to the toilet um, in the bushes. And Danger, because he's so mad about these socks, pushes me what, down what he thinks is like in a bush. It was like an 18-foot drop to a bunch of trees and it broke my leg, my back, had all these big thorns sticking out of me. It was. He almost killed me, to be fair. But um, yeah, I can't. I honestly can't think of of one story that sort of we haven't mentioned. There's there's endless stories from Halloween parties that we won't even get into to just legendary Christmas parties. Um, the best New Year's parties, even though we couldn't drink, and you know, Tomo hosted a couple, and I hosted one where we could drink, and it cost me about a thousand pound deposit on a house. Um, it was honestly the the whole thing. Like Jonas said, it, it it feels like it was a dream, and there's no there's no one story I could do justice with. Um, Hard to pinpoint which one's the best, isn't it? It it really is. Um, but the, the the whole thing, honestly, I think you would watch a film and and think it was made up if if they did the story of it. Um, I, I tell you what was different. Was when, uh, uh, Sorry, the, what was funny was when uh, was when G was the coach our second year, and I think we played Nottingham on the Saturday, and and uh, and he was he was mad because Fret, Fretz and Eds had uh, 
had school that day, so they they weren't at practice. And everyone kept messing up the drill, didn't they? And he and he, he was screaming like, "No, you need to go down here. You need to stop there. You need to go behind the net." And then Tom went down, didn't go behind the net. He <laughs> blows again. And then <laughs> Fornia Mosienko come down. Mosienko doesn't stop. Blows whistle. You need to stop. He's up, he's going nuts. So then me and Dowdy are up. We do it all perfect. And I'm thinking this drill. It ends up on a two on one. So I think right. We've done this bit fine. Just give the puck to Dowdy. He's greedy. He's going to shoot. I'm not getting it back. My job is over. <laughs> he goes to pass it back. So I'm not even <laughs> expecting the pass. I miss the pass. It goes into the corner. G gets his stick, throws it in the air, and just walks off the ice. <laughs> <laughs> I want about, the same what? Dory kicked Tomo off that day. What about when Finner was head coach the year and we used to put tape on the floor in between periods because he used to oh, lose yeah. his marbles. We just used to roll up balls of tape and throw them on the floor and then, like, watch him walk around for five minutes before his speech, picking up every little bit of tape off the floor <laughs> with his horrendous shoes on as well, with a big turn on on the end, like, bent back yeah. like that. <laughs> oh, we, we, just, we, just, we just genuinely, every day, just, we just fought with everybody from the moment we got to the ring to, to the moment we got home. It was just surreal. Honestly, surreal. We'd, I'd, if yep. I could do it all over again, I'd pay to do it. No one was safe. Even Dave, the cameraman, wasn't safe. <laughs> no. <laughs> Never safe. Never safe. I always find it ironic, Jason, when people say that I'd pay to do it now. Jesus, you were so hard to negotiate with in your time, and then you say now you'd pay to do it for free. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I, was, I, was a, I was a bargain. Uh, Me and you, we both paid yeah. to play. Yeah. I think, yeah, Listen, all, the three I think of... all three of us are underpaid, overworked, but geez, I think <laughs> we made it. We made a life decision that we were Steelers, and I think you could have probably cut us in half again, and we'd still be here talking about the same stuff. Oh, hold on, let's not talk about yeah. that stuff now. <laughs> Give it a few more years. <laughs> oh, you're safe, Rocket, Rocket John. You'll be flying Rocky for John. years. Well, listen, the, the club does owe you, the three of you, a, a massive uh, debt of gratitude because, uh, you know, from seeing the three of you close at hand, um, it would not be the same club um, that it is today with, without you. And your DNA rubs off uh, and continues to with Jono, but, but the other two of you as well. Um, it's been a privilege to speak to you tonight and a privilege to knock around with you for the last 11 years, even though I only got invited to one of your weddings. Um, thanks, Huey. That's why you stayed around long enough. Um, exactly, no <laughs> problem. Well, listen, yeah. Well, it was supposed to be an hour's chat. I think it's gone two and a half hours, but uh, I'm sure people will enjoy it. They'll love listening back to the stories. Mark, Jason, Jonna, many thanks. Thanks very much indeed for joining us tonight. Thank you. See you later. No Thank you.